2012. The Nats made a big splash, bringing the first division title to D.C. Two years later, they did it again, putting away the Braves at Turner Field. Now, they're on the verge of a third division title in five years. The magic number is down to two. Welcome to Pittsburgh and where the three rivers get together a beautiful ballpark we all know that PNC it would be a great place for a celebration a lot of Nats fans here in anticipation of that we hope there's a party tonight it could meet tomorrow we'll wait and see the Mets have a ball game tonight against the Phils they stole one last night magic number is two the Nats are up by eight and a half over New York so with all this anticipation going on FP the simple business if you're a Washington National go out and win a ball game do your best and let the chips fall where they may when they're supposed to you have to concentrate on what you need to do in a ball game it's not totally in your control tonight with the magic number being at two so Gio's got to go out and pitch well you hope he gets some luck from Philadelphia and Jeremy Hellickson they got one of their best pitchers going tonight but you have to do what you do best tonight and that's when a baseball game but there is that sense that something great is about to happen and there's no doubt that winning a division three out of five years is very significant. Yeah, for the third time in five years, the D.C. could stand for division champs. And right before we went on, I got a weird feeling that it's going to happen tonight, so we'll see. Okay, we've known some of his weird feelings before, so I say go with that. Gio, what a night it could be for him. And there are times when you just take the previous numbers and you kind of throw them out. For Gio, tonight's one of those nights. Go out and help your team win a ball game and maybe clinch. brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by visit Annapolis.org create your moment at visit Annapolis.org.
bit of a muggy night in the Berg. It's going to be just below the mid 80s for this weekend to get underway. A little cooler tomorrow and Sunday. The Nats magic number is two. It's Hellickson and Gabriel Enoa in New York. And it's 83 here. Humidity not that bad, but it feels a lot muggier than 45 percent. A lot of water around us. Great ballpark. One of the great views in all of baseball along with San Fran. And we have to say our own Nationals Park. Jason Worth, FP, he's a regular visitor to postseason play. It's really amazing. Yeah, he's won nine division titles in his 13 seasons. So how about that stat for the stat of the night? He's going well, he's going for his ninth here tonight, and there's some game notes for you. Yeah, that's impressive. Nine and four against the Bucks since August of 2014. The Nets averaging in September under four runs a game. So they were well over four runs a game before that. And Gio's been great against the Bucks, 2 0 in this ballpark. Seven career starts overall, 4 0, with a 2.81 ERA. Dusty Baker's Ball Club trying to win its 90th game of the year tonight, trying to make it 44 on the road. So the Nats are seventh in the league in hitting, they're fourth in runs, they're fourth in home runs. And Ryan Zimmerman has come alive. So he's reached that eight times with at least 15 home runs hit a three run shot in Miami the other night. Turner Worth Harper Rendon Ramos Drew. Yeah Daniel Murphy still not in there and then Ryan with Espinosa and Gio and for the Pirates 24 year old Jamison Tyone pretty good looking rookie 16 starts he's four and four. Yeah last start was on the 17th at Cincinnati it was a 10 to 4 winner gave up three runs on nine hits over five innings struck out a couple walked one through 79 pitches. So some pretty good arm side run on his fastball. It's an easy 94. Curveball's 12-6 straight up and down. He'll throw it for a get me over strike, then bury you with it with two strikes. Changeup's kind of a work in progress. Here's a defense for the Pirates tonight behind Tyone. Blanco McCutcheon Bell the outfield. Rodriguez Gung left side. Frazier Freeze right side. Francisco Cervelli behind the plate. And there's their youngster Josh Bell got to see a little bit of him when the Pirates were in D.C. July 15th through the 17th and that's one two out of three in that series highly regarded but the Pirates just haven't had the kind of year everybody thought they would they are hitting in September they're on base percentage as the team leads Major League Baseball at 362 do they miss Mark Melanson have they lost some games late yes they have. They're coming off an 11 game road trip and a homestand before that. That was really a problem for them. They're two under 500 at PNC Park. We had a stretch of eight consecutive losses and dropped 12 of 14 from late August to early September. That's kind of what's put them in this desperate situation they're in right now as you look at the umpires. Yeah, that's Mike Everett, the crew chief at first. Tim Timmons, 17th year. Here we go. Tyone to Trey Turner underway quite late at 708, strike one. Turner in exactly a month has hit 392 recently. 0 and 2. Tyone born in Lakeland Florida pitched in high school in the Woodlands Texas Houston area Pirates first rounder six years ago and the 0 2 is down and in. They got to stay on that sinker away with two strikes if you're a right hander tonight. He'll try to run it back, start it off the plate, and bring it back. Second overall pick in that draft. And that breaking ball was kind of center cut. Trey Turner thrown out by Young Ho Gung at third base. Worth and Harper the next two. Gets the 24 year old starter who's pitched 93 innings. At the big league level. I'm still kind of boggled by that factoid you came up with with Jason Worth. Division winning ball clubs up for grabs here for the ninth time in 13 years. I, I don't think that's any accident, FB. You can't luck into that many. No, he's a winner. He's changed the whole culture here in D.C. from day one. One of those years he said he was injured with the Dodgers. I said, were you on the roster? He said, yes. I said, did you get a full share? He said, yes. I said, okay, we're counting that. <laughs> we told him if it's in the bank, it's in the broadcast booth. Absolutely. Did I mean, he? He's a winner. Yeah. It's that simple. 
Tyone getting ahead of the first two batters. That's inside 1-1. One, one. Then Bryce Harper. Strike call. Tim Timmons deliberate. One ball, two strikes. I just want to look out there at the scoreboard and see the Phillies score 10 in the first inning. <laughs> They are getting underway right now if first pitch is on time. And worth reaching for one left side on the charts, Gung, and he's thrown out the first two Nationals batters. Ten games left, and it's time for Bryce Harper to start making lots of noise. One for four in Miami two nights ago. Overall one for nine in that series with a base on balls. Boy that right field porch is just staring at him isn't it. It's got to be so tantalizing to oh. left handers to want to get out in front. And when you look from the foul pole to center field that's the cozy side of the ballpark even in the gaps. 375 right at the end of the bleachers there the elevated ones. And then only 399 to dead center. It's 410 to deep left center. So left field a lot bigger here than the right side is. This place is gorgeous, though. I mean, they absolutely did it right. I know we say that every year, but every year it just smacks you in the face how beautiful this ballpark is. Rice's next homer will be number 25. He's driven in 82. And the 0-1 pitch. High in the air, left center. Big part of the ballpark, and it cannot hold Bryce Harper, at least at the top of the wall. A foot or two from a home run, and he hit that ball about 395 feet. And Polanco hit the wall hard out there. A Starling Marte came back yesterday and had back spasms. So he came out of the game. We don't know when he's coming back. And now Gregory Polanco runs into the wall. But how about the swing of Bryce Harper? I thought he went the other way to one of the deepest parts of this ballpark. Pretty good effort by Polanco. So there goes a the no hitter, a double by Bryce Harper, and one of his best swings of the year. Trying to think of another park in the major leagues where that's not a home run to left center. That's a good call. This might be the only one. Miami pretty deep but I don't think it's that deep. And now the. Pirates. Looking after talented Gregory Polanco. I think he's saying he hit his face in the fence. Here's the end of it again. I mean, you gotta love the effort if you're Clint Hurdle, and Polanco does do a face mm. plant right into the wall. So there's probably some concussion protocol going on with Ben Potenziano, the head trainer for the Pirates. Well, the Nats will have a first inning scoring opportunity. Anthony Rendon will be next after Dick's extended pause. So Bryce Harper's had trouble staying through the ball going the other way all season long. And it, you know, the reason I said that's one of his better swings of the year, watch him stay through this and go the other way and not pull off. It was a curve ball that he just stays through and drills the other way. I think he thought he got him. And I think we thought he got him. But the ball barely stays in. A warm night here at PNC. The ball was flying in batting practice. And this is taking a while and this is OK. This is what Major League Baseball wants to do. And it looks like maybe. Their trainer is not satisfied that Polanco's OK and he appears to be leaving the game. No he hit that wall hard. I mean but that's a good move by the Pirates. There's no way he knows where he is right now. That was that was violent.
been there. It's a weird feeling. You're in a dream state. You're kind of queasy. And everything's just a, a, a fog to you. Watch his face. Watch his head. I mean, that's going from 60 to zero in an instant. I mean, that's significant. And, and you hope he's all right. Look at the Pirates trainer kind of holding them up on the way in. Yeah, it's one of the, their cornerstone young players right there. And look at the bill of his hat flipped all the way back because of the collision into the fence. So Clint Hurdle looking into his dugout. We'll see who he chooses. Looks like there's going to be a couple of changes. Alan Hansen, an infielder. And then it looks like Sean Rodriguez will go out and play left. I think Frazier's going out there. It's Frazier to left and Hansen to second. All right. So, Jamison Tyone facing Anthony Rendon. Wilson Ramos will be on deck here as the Nats cleanup man steps in. So that's Adam Frazier. Adam Frazier saying, All those ground balls I took today for nothing. Now playing left. <laughs> well, maybe he'll pick up a ground ball in a moment out there, and that'll be a good thing for the Nats. Rendon 78 RBIs. We're going to play him to pull up the middle as Hansen goes to his right behind and slightly to the right of the bag. And that one well inside ball one. Anthony Rendon's VP today was unbelievable. I mean hitting taters into the upper deck and left center. Not that that means anything but it's fun to watch. Rendon way out in front. That one goes screaming into the camera bay and came right back out. One one pitch left side balls got some velocity gun cuts it off and ends up making all three assists on the outs in the top of the first and that's got some good swings and now Gio goes to work in the bird.
Bring their last homestand. They'll be home the rest of the season. So the Bucks are hitting 258, fourth in the league, sixth in runs and 12th in home runs. Francisco Cervelli is just wearing out lefties right now, hitting 408 against them. 20 for 49. Gio's got to come up with something for that guy. So Adam Frazier, the leadoff man, is now the left fielder, and Polanco out down in that number six spot for the rookie switch hitter, Alan Hansen. Here's Gio, 4 0, 2.81 career against the Pirates. Yeah, the season two seam, four seam fastball, it's averaging 90.8 miles an hour. Curveball 77, changeup 83.6. Last start against the Braves on the 17th, 7 to 3 loss. Went just four and a third, gave up six runs on nine hits. Struck out seven, didn't walk anybody. He's hoping to turn that one around here tonight. Nats need a big one out of him. Frazier's never faced him before. Adam Frazier hitting 325, 40 hits in 57 ball games. Goes the other way. That's a tricky one for Espinosa. Was that bare hand? Oh. And Zimmerman the pick on the back end. 6 3, a star by both to dazzle us at the start of the Pirates' night. That's some weird spin on it, too. Danny Espinosa went bare hand and cannon over the top. Watch this. It spins away. He goes bare hand. And then here comes the big arm. And how about the big pick on the back end? And that's how this one starts on defense for the Nats. What a play by Danny Espinosa. Hey, you talk about this all the time. Take the field, be ready. Both work. That's impressive. That's a good call. You have to be ready from the first pitch every single night. Sometimes guys ease their way into the game. The ball finds you early, and you make a quick error. Here's Cervelli. Left side, Espinosa. A lot more time this time, and chest tied to Ryan Zimmerman. Two outs. So, so far, there's five outs in this game, and only two players have played on defense. Here's your defense for the Nats, Worth, Turner, Harper. The outfield, Espinosa Rendon left side, Drew Zimmerman right side, and Wilson Ramos behind the plate. So gun with all the outs for the Pirates. Danny so far all the outs for the Nats, and Stephen Drew is at second again. Daniel Murphy with another night off. Geo against Andrew McCutcheon. Ten game hitting streak for Kutch. They're coming off, as I mentioned, an 11 game road trip. He had 370 on that trip with four homers and 13 batted in. Wouldn't you know he'd get warm just in time to face the Nats. He's been a Washington nemesis over the years. But uh, maybe cooled off a little last year and this. At 309 in the month of September. He didn't look healthy. When the, the Pirates were in D.C. And sometimes guys go through a whole season where they're jacked up and nobody knows about it because they don't tell anybody. Career against the Nats, 333, 14 homers, 32 RBIs. Those are lofty numbers considering the teams are not in the same division. Only play home and home once a year. And Gio, maybe avoiding him, maybe not, but he's aboard. With a quick walk, two outs, and Young Ho Gung is their cleanup man. Gung is at 258. Red hot. Just a couple of till a couple of days ago, nine for nineteen. But now he's one for his last 17. One for five against Gio. Foot got down late right there at the big leg kick. That might be a reason why he's one for his last 17. Timing looked off. Just one pitch, but with that big leg kick, he was late. Curveball ball way down and in. It stayed close to Ramos and McCutcheon stayed at first. Six stolen bases this year for McCutcheon. He's been caught seven times. That's just maybe the weirdest stat about his whole season. I know. Running game 
really slowed after the 13 season when he was the MVP and stole 27 bases. That's a swing and a foul. The year after 18. Last year 11. And this year as FP mentioned way way down with a bad percentage. McCutcheon 29 years of age. Tanya, all those stolen bases take a toll on your body over time. 160 of them for him at the big league level. And that right there just getting back now getting up. That there's no stat for how many times that's happened that takes it out of you too. We should have a staff for that. We have a staff for everything else. Wow. Overmatched on that pitch. Geo having Gung take a very feeble swing. So each team gets a base runner. No score early in Pittsburgh. For you on Daniel Murphy, an MRI on Murphy revealed what Dusty Baker called today a mild buttock strain. So Murphy will be shut down through the weekend. The Nationals going to continue to give him some time off to try and let that injury heal up. The good news from this sort of perspective is that the Nationals won't need to really go to Murphy until the National League Division Series, which is two weeks from today. So they're going to shut Murphy down, hope that he can kind of progress over the next couple of weeks. Then they'll see how it goes over the latter stages of the regular season. It doesn't really hurt him when he swings, Dusty said, more when he runs. So they're going to be careful with Murphy guys down the stretch. All right, thank you, Dan, with our Coons.com sideline report. Over two million vehicles sold and counting. Well, that's not great news at all. But now at least we know everything that's going on there and hopefully Murph gets a whole bunch of ABs before the regular season ends. See I don't think that's important at all. I think he just has to be ready for October 7th. And the reason I say that he's not a timing guy. He, he hits out of bed. He's a hitter. It's all he does is lift up his heel and go. So him missing games is not going to be a big deal for him in the playoffs other than you know his own personal statistics and going for that MVP thing. So in my mind just get ready for October 7th and, and I'm sure Dusty Baker on the same page. Yeah last October was pretty good. And just get ready for the playoffs. Don't even chance it as long as the Nats can wrap this thing up. One and two to Ramos. Tyone's throwing some pretty good pitches with two strikes keeping the ball down so far. Three ground ball outs Harper jacked that one deep to left center. Missed a homer by inches, but everything else on the ground. And then Gio had a quick first inning on 12 pitches. Ramos is going to be called out by the home plate umpire. Tim Timmons rings him up and for Tyone, first strikeout. So this is where we think everything happened on Saturday. It was a Fox game. And Murph hits the ball down the right field line. And watch kind of right there, something catches around first, maybe. You could tell by the grimace, and then he would lay on the bag at second base in pain. 
And that's a tough guy, folks. So if he's laying there, you know something's not right. And obviously, we all know that now. But that's a guy this team, I don't think, could get deep into October without. So whatever it takes to get him healthy, figure it out, go get him on October 7th. Hopefully, he's back before then. Here's Steven Drew. Three fifty one his last thirty eight games a long time on the DL in the middle of that because of the vertigo. But he's come back and played some great baseball both sides of the ball. What a valuable guy to have who can play second or short or third or first. Thirty three hits and one hundred twenty at bats. One of the sneaky leaders on this ball club too. He's always taking guys under his wing, the younger players, even his peers, as veterans. Always chirping around the cage, very positive, a lot more vocal than you would suspect. Looking for a base runner with Ryan Zimmerman next. And Drew will stay alive with a ground ball right side. There's Nissan with the entire at bat. to October where games are so tight one swing can make a difference and you love what you see from this bench Drew Robinson established left handed guys Heisey from the right side Have somebody in there who can really run give you a good at bat like the one you're seeing right now yeah In 2008, he had 44 doubles, 21 home runs, and 11 triples for the Diamondbacks. <laughs> Played great defensive shortstop, one of the best defenders in the National League at that time, and could really fly. Then he broke his ankle, and his whole game kind of changed. That ball is drilled to the left field corner, and it is fair into the corner. Bounces over the wall, so the Nats have a couple of doubles here. Both left-handed batters going the other way. Well that's the game plan off Jamison Tyone if you're left handed he's got arm side run so to pull him would be a mistake watch the ball just kind of run away from Drew and he stays on it and drives it that way tremendous balance through the swing and the ball bounces out of here for a ground rule double nice at bat bit of a milestone career double number two hundred and fifty for Steven Drew his batting average just keeps going up he's going to be close to two eighty now. So there's Daniel Murphy's double. It's just Stephen Drew. <laughs> You're right. So it's, 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 it's a wash right now. I'll take that wash. Ryan Zimmerman has suddenly hit safely in six of his last eight games. Three for eight, a homer, three RBIs at Miami. Pirates philosophy throughout the minor leagues and the big leagues is pound you in. They're not afraid to hit guys. I mean, they're not trying to hit guys, but in to win. And if they miss off the plate, Julia, that's why they get so many rhubarbs with other teams because Clint Hurdle's philosophy is, I'm coming to get you. We don't care. We're going to make you aware of that fastball in the inner half. Ryan Zimmerman thinking the other way. Hits that ball a ton. And in Miami on Wednesday, he did not go the other way. Well, you remember the at bat before this, or maybe a couple at bats before this? He went about 410 feet to center for an out. This one ruined somebody's cocktail. Well, if he was talking about their pitching, that was Ray Searage, their pitching coach in the third base dugout. 
Ryan Zimmerman sitting on 1,499 hits. He's going to get jammed and fight one off to the other side. Looking for hit number 1,500. Forty five RBIs in the year. Off speed and that is a rocket to right center. Fifteen hundred for Zimmerman one nothing for the Nats as Drew comes home and they are doubling opposite field all over PNC Park. What a great swing on a milestone number. But Mike Schmidt said a couple of years in Philadelphia that he was the best hitter he'd ever seen in RBI situations. Hasn't worked out that way for Ryan this year, but when you talk about his body of work, that's what I think about, that swing right there with Ryan Zimmerman. So hit number 1,500 apropos that he drove in a run with a double. Mike Wallace has the baseball. Homers are nice for milestones, but... At least the clubhouse guy doesn't have to go crazy retrieving a double. I like the RBI double. That's nice. Congratulations. Yeah. What a great swing. Here's Espinosa. He's heating up too. Don't sleep on that fact. Yeah, seven of nine games now in which he's hit safely. And Ryan's four for his last nine. That was a big home run too. Very timely in Miami. Now it's let's go Phils. No score there, top of the second. Runner on first, one out. Not that I'm paying any attention. What kind of a lead does he have? Pretty good lead. <laughs> Cody Ashy up. <laughs> Way inside, and Danny Espinosa hopping back from that one. 1-1. One, one. Espinosa gets a big shot to center. See you later. Right into the Pirates' hedge on the batter's eye. Three nothing. Washington. Espinosa increases his career high to 23. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of Nats fans making the trip up here. A lot of people rooting for it to happen tomorrow, but you know what? You take it when it happens. Danny Espinosa putting the Nats up three to nothing early in this one at PNC. How about that? 23rd home run of the year, and it was a bomb. McCutcheon didn't move. How often do you see a center fielder not move on a home run? Doesn't happen very often. There's the flaw at the end. 69 runs batted in now for Espinosa. Just don't pull anything. Just nice, easy fly. So Gio's next. He's thrown 12 pitches. He's about to bat. He has a three run lead. Still only one out, second inning. I mean, this was a smooth swing. I mean, he smooths this ball straight away, Sarah. Look at that. Nice and easy. And watch McCutcheon, top of your screen. Couple steps. Yep. It hit the E in Pirates for Espinosa. Or close enough at least. There it is. Over run number 23. How'd they find it? Get the greenskeeper to go out there and get it. Geo, six hits on the year. 12th homer given up by Tyone in 95 innings. And Gonzalez drills one to the gap in right center. Gio's going to join the doubles party here. Every Nationals hit extra bases so far. Four doubles and a home run. <laughs> Second double of the season for Gio Gonzalez. Ball smoked. A fastball right down Broadway and Gio gets on top of it shoots the gap in right center field and 
an easy stand-up double for the Nats left-hander. It was just the right-hander when he hit it. Here's Trey Turner. He's up there hacking, and that hit him hard. Done that a few times. Where to get him? Ooh, Shinberger. Knee or shin? Yeah, he, he went down holding his right knee after he was on the ground. Wow. Oh, it was front leg, so it had to be his left knee. Yeah, that'll bring you to the ground. Strike call. It's not a strike. Calls in. And that was a nasty pitch right after he hit her head. This hit himself. This ball's way in. Look where he set up off the plate. Not even close. Three runs on five hits, four consecutive extra base hits in this inning. So their starters at 40 already. Phillies have a one nothing lead at New York. I mean, Cesar Hernandez just singled in a run with two outs. One of the best swings we've seen tonight. Yeah, single right up the middle. Well, that's getting exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I try to calm myself now. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. A hard slider by Jamison Tyone, his second K of the inning, but the first one happened four hitters ago. Two down. Jason Worth is next. Tonight, Nats have quieted them down. Ballpark holds 38,300 plus. They're loving it. Just keeping it on the inside right now. It's an off speed pitch over Jason's head. No intent. And it's like a curveball that. He overthrew and backed up on him. Almost hit his bat. Did you see that? Got it out of the way at the last second. Nicely done. Big rip. On a 96 heater up, strike two. Well, if you're throwing 94 to 96 and you're not throwing your curveball, your changeup over. Big league hitters are going to sit dead red and do damage. I don't care how hard you throw, and that's kind of been the case for Tyone early in this one. The off speed has been non existent. And Worth on a pitch that bounces. Not able to get to that, but a big inning for the Nationals. Drew a double, Zimmerman a double, and then Danny Espinosa. Just hitting that ball beautifully to center. So his 23rd made it 3-0. That's what the Nats have early.
You know, there could be some champagne in the outfield tonight. On September, or October 2nd, not September 2nd, because that already happened, Nats Marlins play 305. Post-game yoga class, receive a Nats yoga mat. Special ticket is required. So visit national.com slash yoga to stretch. Well, the Mets coming up big. Now 2 nothing. A couple of guys on base still. At New York, second and third, two outs. Looks like Odubel Herrera is batting, so we're only getting paid to call one game, but we will complimentary fashion keep you up to date on what's happening. I'm watching too. I don't care if anybody knows. I'm watching both. In New York, here's Rocket Arms presented by Quicken Loans and Geo since the start of 2012, third in the National League by a left handed pitcher. You know, Kershaw's ahead. And then there's Jamison Tyone, who's got a good strikeout to walk ratio. You know, whatever happens tonight, I just hope that everybody at home watching this realizes what a special time it is to be a baseball fan of D.C. Th this run of three division championships in five years just doesn't happen very often. And Dusty Baker has done a heck of a job this year, along with Davey Johnson putting him on the map, Matt Williams in 14. It's just, it's just a really special time to be a baseball fan. I hope we all remember that. Th this doesn't happen. This is not normal. Here's Sean Rodriguez. Strike one. Even though it seems like it is, it's not. And I think the fans that have been here since day one from 2005 on realize how special this is. And just soak it in and enjoy it, man. It doesn't happen very often. Great change up there. So Geo first inning, 12 pitches, seven strikes. And of course, as we often talk about, this is the opportunity for our Geo in the shutdown inning. It would be huge early because it's 3 nothing, not 1 nothing, and a chance to put his stamp on this game in these early innings now. Off speed, Rodriguez unable to get there. And Gio Gonzalez, second straight strikeout. Mercedes Benz will track it. Pretty good combo from Gio Gonzalez. Not late movement at 84. He likes pitch against the Pirates. He's got a great numbers career against these guys. Four and zero in seven career starts. I think he said that already. Yeah, two of those wins in each ballpark. Alan Hansen, one of their September call-ups. From the Dominican, signed with the Pirates at the age of 16, seven years ago, and a 281 hitter in the minor leagues all that time. 266 in 110 games at Indianapolis, their AAA, for the call up this year. Chopper, third baseline, that's a hit. Inside the numbers brought to you by Jeep. So the Nats sustaining their great success over recent years since the start of that first division championship season. Only St. Louis more wins and by a very I mean that's one win a year or less. Some elite teams on there. And it's interesting that four of the five are in the National League. There's David Freeze the first baseman hitting 265. Two of the best in the league at turning double plays meeting this weekend. Pirates are second in the league. Nationals are in the top six.
Breeze has hit into more than any other Pittsburgh hitter. 15. Two one pitch and Geo 93 right by a power hitter. I mean you're looking at the wild card on the mound right now for the Nats in October against the Dodgers. The Dodgers stink against left handers. It's that simple. They really do. They, they're left handed heavy lineup. But if Gio Gonzalez can lock it in and have a good game against the Dodgers. It's going to be huge right. Absolutely. They tear up right handers, but they have their problems against left handers. A strikeout, an infield hit, and now a 3 2 count. But not every right hander they see is Max Scherzer or Tanner Roark either. Freeze getting some rips here. So the Phillies got two in the top of the second. Mets and the Giants dead even for the wild card's first two spots. St. Louis had gained back. Jake Arrieta shut them out 5 0 at Wrigley today. 3 2, runner holding again. And David Fries still in there. Prized rookie Josh Bell. Right center, a blooper. Rice charging hard. Tried to deke the runner into slowing down, thinking he might catch it, but it's two on one out. Little inside out swing perfectly placed. I mean, the one thing Gio has going for him for the shutdown and he's getting to the bottom of the Pirates order. Clint Hurl has 13 relievers. I don't think he would yank Jameson Tyone this quick but we'll see. on deck Josh Bell the rookie 30 for 98 hitting 306 the 295 a triple A this year with 60 RBIs Field well hit. Harper reaches up to grab it. Ball seemed to have another gear when it got out there. Good grab by Bryce. Hanson to third, but a very big second out for Gio with the pitcher coming up. Everybody talks about Bryce Harper and his offense this year, but he's played a solid right field. I made a nice in flight adjustment right here. The ball's carrying at PNC tonight. He's judging it to be right there and then watch him take that little jab step plant the left foot and give with that baseball to make a nice running catch. It's a nice play. You know in flight adjustment like when you recline your seat a little bit after you get past 10,000 feet. Yeah. Put your tray table down. Get a pillow. Sounds like an attitude adjustment to me. That's <laughs> it's an in-flight adjustment. Here's Tyone, and he just got his third hit of the year and his second RBI. Three for 29, and once again, Gio gets to a shutdown inning and has a problem. It's now a 3-1 game. 
He read Gio's lips. He said, that's all right. It's on me. Threw a first pitch fastball right down the middle. And Jamison Tayo goes ambush mode to get the Pirates on the board. Pretty good swing. That didn't look like an 071 hitter to me. Nope. Well, now it's the top of the order for Adam Frazier. Twenty four year old infielder from Bishop Georgia went to Mississippi State. Did that little flare to the left side of the infield first time and Danny Espinosa on a bare hand play. Remarkably got it to Zimmerman for that first down. If you're having to ever pitch curve I wonder if that shutdown inning is, is becoming a psychological thing for Gio like a mental block. It just seems like as soon as the Nats score, he gives up runs the next inning. It's it's weird. It's a blooper yeah. of this or that or, or whatever, and it just kind of happens. That was really the first well-hit clean single of the inning. Maybe you're trying so hard to get that shut down inning that it goes the other way. Who knows? I'm just speculating. Left handed hitter getting his rips. Game in hitting 339 his last 26 ball games. He was a sixth rounder by the Pirates three years ago. Another one of the great college programs in Starkville, Mississippi. Now the Mets have scored a run. 2 1, bottom of the second. Up the middle, Espinosa. Slows it down with his glove. Freeze coming home to score. The ball gets through. Two runners were going to move up. And because Gio got back there to grab it, they stay at first and second. But it's a 3 2 game. Four hits in the inning. Oh, fastball right down the middle. You can't see the location on this replay, but it was right the same pitch that Tyone hit back up the middle. Adam Frazier gets. Good throw by Trey Turner. Frazier just gets in. Ball skips past Wilson Ramos. But the location for Gio right now is not what he wants it to be. And he's fighting out there, but that was center cut. And he got Cervelli first time up, but this continues to be one of the best right handed batters. Versus left handed pitching in the league. Adam Frazier, 10th RBI. Watch the location of this pitch. They want it in. Look where it is. Right down the middle. I mean, you can't put it more down the middle. So I mean, he's trying to get in there. It's not an easy game, but that ball's going to get hit more times than it's not. So the teams trading four hit second innings here. And it's Cervelli, who's driven in 33 on the season. Into the 8 o'clock hour we go at beautiful PNC Park opened in 2001. Nats got three in the top. Espinosa two run homer and now the Pirates have a two run answer so far. Left side Espinosa short way drew out of the inning. 3 2 after 2. Bryce Harper hit the ball a mile, stayed in the yard, barely. First time up.
broadcast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. That, of course, was Bill Mazeroski waving his cap as he hit that walk-off Game 7 homer against the Yankees back in 60. That wasn't a Pirates yet. Join us for Soccer Night Monday at Nats Park. For the purchase of a special ticket, receive an exclusive photo op with Ali Krieger and Crystal Dunn of the U.S. Women's National Team. Visit groupmatics.com, pardon me, groupmatics.events slash soccer 2016. Got that? And maybe the Nats will win 3 0. We're going top three. Harper, Rendon, Ramos. I think they should have badminton there. It'd be pretty cool. He goes off speed, just missing. So both pitchers had long, long second innings. Geo's 25 pitches. 33 for Jamison Tyon. Harper the other way again, and he's two for two. This is perfectly placed. So Bryce Harper double off the top of the wall. This one a little off the end. But I like the fact that he's thinking the other way on the Tyon sinker. It's a good approach. So a couple of hits, nicely done. Now it's time to get dressed. A couple of gloves. He's got the gardening glove he's putting on right now. He pull weeds with this one, see? This one's going to take a pitch or two. Just hold him for now. HGTV, Harper Gardening Television yeah, Network. Let's get this one on. This one's a little more heavy duty. That's the oven mitt. For when you're pulling the heavy duty weeds. And I think this one just stays in the hand. Yeah, we're good. Rendon pulled it to third, first time up. Hit the ball pretty sharply. Jung Ho Gung to his left, cut it off to end the first inning with Bryce on second base. Ryan Zimmerman, Bryce Harper get on at the right time. Look out. Pretty good pitch. Nissan will track it. Anthony Rendon will take it. It's a good take. It's a ground ball. Swing at it. That's a big rip. Rendon two RBIs away from 80. He's had 42 in his last 52 games. Tyone's pitch count really getting up there after it took him 33 to strike out three guys and give up four extra base hits in the second. We need the Mets game to hurry up. They have to end before this one does. And they're behind us in a half an inning. Yeah. Yeah, they started just a couple of minutes after this one, but a lot of base runners early in that game, too. Rendon just fouled. When you have insight, you know how to handle your finances with confidence. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever and you. So some young guys to watch. 21-year-old pitcher Dane Dunning. 22-year-old outfielder Andrew Stevenson. 
then 21 year old third baseman Drew Ward. So the Auburn double days single A double A represented by Stevenson and Potomac represented by Drew Ward. So much talent in this organization. Rendon high in the air playable right side approaching the line Hanson. The ball foul when he makes the grab. First out. Joe Ross tomorrow here in Pittsburgh. Night game. He'll go against Ivan Nova, the former Yankee, who's having a pretty good year. Pitchers to be determined on Sunday. Then the D backs are looking at three of the four. They will play at Nationals Park next week. There will be a Thursday afternoon game. Before we wrap everything up against the Marlins starting one week from tonight. Wilson Ramos struck out swinging first time. You're talking about the Pirates situation. They're four games out of the wild card with 10 left. They play the Nats three games, the Cubs for four, and the Cardinals for three to end it. A lot of games to make up in a week and a half. Yeah, against some good teams. Yeah. I mean, as you can't. said, they had that streak where they lost 12 out of 14. Had a hard time putting teams away in their own ballpark. And really put them in a bad spot. 14th season as a manager. Pretty good numbers. He looks like a manager. I mean, a Norman Rockwell manager. That's a good call. Right? Looks like him. He's gruff. He sounds like a skipper who's been around yeah, for a long that, time. That's a manager. Yeah. Surprised in a big old child. It's old school. It hurdle once a can't miss prospect. That's some big league time, but never the career people had forecast for him. You know who my new favorite player in the big leagues is? Let me think. Michael Franco, he just hit a home run to make it 3 1. Okay. Not that I'm paying any attention to that. There you go. Well, the Mets didn't get the shutdown inning, did they, after they scored? So Ramos staying on that ball to foul it away. One ball, two strikes. We just heard that uh, Gregory Polanco is being treated for a left facial contusion as he went face into the wall out there in that long double by Bryce Harper. Boy, did we hear it. It's kind of loud. Max talking baseball with Mike Maddox, what new? He's always talking ball. Just bounce around that dugout. Talking baseball to anybody. Love it. And you can tell when he pitches, he just loves the game. He oozes baseball every time he takes the mound. Got it done in Miami the other night. 18th win. 1 2 to Ramos, waging a good battle here. Wilson will hop back from that one. Two balls, two strikes. It, it almost like Kirby, he, he loves baseball. Not so much pitching, he just loves baseball. Everything about it, sitting in the dugout between starts, the work that comes with it. You know his fifth day is special. There's no doubt about that. But his at bats, the sacrifice bunts, the clutch hitting, he just loves baseball. Two two. Ramos went blocked by Cervelli. Two outs. Strikeout number four for Jamison and Tayo. Tuesday, September 27th. Mark it down. Be one of the first 25,000 fans into the ballpark. You get a Ben Revere Garden Home that's presented by Delta Airlines. Nats Diamondback 7:05. Bring home this year's gnome. Visit nationals.com slash tickets. Well, here's Stephen Drew who got that whole thing started last inning with a one out opposite field ground rule double. You know, we don't get to spend every day around 
anybody but our guys. But in all the years I've been hanging around ballparks, I've never seen anybody who gets as much out of the other four days between starts as Max Scherzer. He's always contributing something to the team. That's a good point. Yeah, you know, Pedro Martinez, who I played with for a long time, would just, you know, tape guys up in the dugout, put a shoestring on a baseball and tease fans with it over the top of the dugout. He, he wasn't like all baseball all the time. When it was his day, look sure. out. But he wasn't going up and down the dugout talking ball with everybody. He was having fun. So there's different approaches to being great. I mean, I'm a big fan of Max's. Pedro's was fun too, don't get me wrong. But some people have to turn that switch off when they're not pitching. Max's is always on. So for half inning, Mike watches Geo, then he listens to Max. It's great. That ball by the mound. Nobody at second base. The ball comes up on Hanson. Everybody's safe. And it's two on two out. And a very decisive base hit call by the official scorer immediately. That ball came up on him on the end. He, he knew he had to field it off the left and throw it off the right. This took a weird hop, maybe a little out of control. Nice backup by Sean Rodriguez. Ryan Zimmerman. As he was peppering the deep part of the yard during betting practice today, Dusty kept saying, easy pop, easy pop. The fact that now Ryan's swing looks a whole lot more relaxed and smooth than it had previously. And the ball jumping off that bat. Dusty wore the white sweatpants yesterday, and now, of course, he's wearing them today. And the newest member of the 1500 hit club, Ryan Zimmer. Wait, it wasn't yesterday. It was two days ago. We had an off day yesterday, but we traveled on it, so it seemed like we played. It's the first time Dusty's ever done that. He said he liked it. Traveling on the off day. We liked it. Oh, yeah, we didn't get in at 4 in the morning. It was beautiful. Another day in Miami. Are you kidding me? O2 to Zimmerman. So Harper and Drew, two for two. As Minoza has homered, the left handed hitters tonight dominating. Jamison Tyone. And that ball right over the inside edge, a front door breaking ball. Strikeout number five for Tyone. The Nats strand a couple and lead 3 2.
to you by T-Mobile. Number 98 for the Cubs. And ironically, the last time they won that many, they went to the World Series in 1945. Red Sox are just running away with what was a tight race now. Eight straight, magic number five. They're five and a half up on Toronto, seven on Baltimore. Noah Syndergaard will not make his scheduled start tomorrow. He has strep throat. I have no idea how the Mets are doing what they're doing. No idea. Well, these guys are looking at this right now. Some of the Nats players Probably. checking out the scoreboard. You have to be. And somebody, maybe the Mets broadcasters are good friends, are saying, ah, we got the Phillies right where we want them. Mets were down to two situations last night with two run deficits. Ninth inning, 11th inning, and they took care of both. That was crazy. So a long night of baseball ahead in Pittsburgh and New York. Did you see the headlines in the New York Post? Did they come As Drupal's nickname is As. And it said, Save their As. This ball drilled to right center by Andrew McCutcheon. Harper can't quite get there. McCutcheon digging for two, digging for three. They'll make it easily. Lead off triple. McCutcheon's got an 11 game hitting streak. Yeah, just the third triple of the season for Andrew McCutcheon, but he hit it well. And it looked like a sinker down and in, then he just inside out. It's good effort by Bryce Harper. He was tracking this nice route. Just a little out of his reach. Love to see guys selling out like that. And then McCutcheon just turns on the Jets right here. An easy triple for the Pirates center fielder. He's run a lot better than last time we saw him, I'll tell you that. Only one infielder in that's Rendon just beyond the bag at third. Geo struck out Jung Ho Gung swinging first time. Now the tying run is 90 feet away here in the third inning. Left side that is an RBI and the game is tied. Well, nobody said it was going to be easy tonight. Gung, RBI number 56. Sean Rodriguez is next, and Gio struck him out on off speed stuff first time. John Rodriguez having a nice year for the Pirates. They probably didn't anticipate him playing this much, but 18 home runs, 54 RBI. 37 more RBI than he had last year. There's some talk about him platooning at second base next year with Adam Frazier. But it might cost the Pirates just over a million dollars this year for Sean Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. Those numbers are going to go up. Hard working 31 year old player who plays with a lot of emotion. Still think he should have a Gatorade contract after he beat the tar out of that cooler last year in the playoff game. Yeah, that one. Still standing. Those things are tough, man. They don't go down easy. They got a hard chin. Hard hit right side. Drew to a knee. Two outs. Another bat coming up for Alan Hansen. So Jeep with some numbers against the Pirates. Eighth start. These are the numbers coming into tonight. Nats have given him great run support. He's been striking out free swinging bucks for years and has kept it in the yard when he faces Pittsburgh. Hanson dribbled that base hit down the third baseline with one out second inning that got them on their way to a four hit two run inning. Oh. 
And Gio tried to bring the breaking ball around on 0 2. Got him on the off speed first time, and that went right off the end. Actually, it was Rodriguez who he struck out with a pitch like that. Tried to get the rookie there. Hansen able to stay alive. They pull off everything. The outside fastball is open. He hasn't really made the adjustment to go, but they're going in right here. I mean, all of his swings have been pull swings to outside heaters that are running away from him, change ups run away from him. His front side is leaking big time. And the outer half's open if they want it. Or the changeup will work. Out of play, right side. Pirates are having an odd season there. 76 and 76. And including tonight, they've scored 696 runs and given up 696 runs. Is there a song after every pitch? By I the think organ? there is. I mean, every pitch. His Mi fingers. Mini songs. His fingers have to be cramped. On. Breaking ball, right side. Start up the music. <laughs> this half inning is over. <laughs> but the Pirates get a double and a grounder, triple and a grounder to tie to Danny Espinosa, home run guy, leading off. Red straightaway, sir. Just smooth that one out of here about 400 and whatever feet. What did we get on the hit speed and the distance on that? Either way, beautiful home run by Danny Espinosa. I'm going to call it 421 on the distance, just right. to guess. We there, found it. It's still there. Is that a playable lie, or do you get a drop? What's the ruling on that? Well, when we play, it's always a drop. Geico 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. When you play, that's a foot wedge. You're just kicking that thing right on, right outside those letters and then hitting it. Just making sure no one's looking. You might have your media confused on that. <laughs> Top of the fourth, Espinosa, Gio, and Turner. So Danny, a couple of home runs this week. 23 with 69 RBIs now. Normally I love with Danny Espinosa bunts, but if you book a guy your first at bat and you go deep, do it again. He's scared of you right now. And I'm scared of them. Those real pirates, Bob? Arr.
Espinosa could be an X factor when it comes to offense oh. in October. That one really got Francisco Cervello. Hitter extending to foul one off, and who knows what's going to happen. He's going to wave off the skipper and the trainer. I'll tell you this, and if you haven't realized this by now, if we don't show you the replay, you'd know where it got him. If we do show you the replay, it's not there. Todd Tomzik, the trainer this time with Clint Hurdle. Oh, we're showing you the replay. So he's okay. Yep. Got him on the knee. That had to hurt, though. Better than the other thing. Oh, two again. Espinosa can't get to the high heater. Last three outs for Jamison Tyone at been strikeouts. Mercedes Benz will track. And just climb a ladder through a fastball in his eyes. It looked huge. Couldn't lay off. The pitchers are two for two tonight. One has an RBI. One has an extra base hit, and that's Geo. That was his second double of the year, by the way. He had a rifle shot to right center. That was a beauty. Pulls this one right there. Jun Ho Gung. Two outs. Watch the drive to the pennant race with MLB.TV Premium. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 support devices, and you can enjoy a free subscription to At Bat Premium. Number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV right now. Well, the Marlins pitched Trey Turner well. He got him for a homer Wednesday in the seventh inning. But counting that series, and so far tonight, he's won for his last 15. Been seeing a lot of breaking balls, a lot of off speed stuff all week. You're definitely watching the scoreboard. And that ball pops straight up. Cervelli gets rid of the mask. Foul ball when he catches it, the Nats go quickly. Top of the fourth. Point in the near future tonight, tomorrow, Sunday. Who knows? The Nationals will be wrapping up the National League East. And Dusty Baker was asked earlier today whether he plans to have a muted celebration because the Nationals have much loftier goals than just a division title. Dusty said, nah, I don't mute a celebration. How do you do that? How do you tell guys to celebrate just a little bit? It's a giant step. You work this hard, you play this long to try and get to the postseason in the first place. He said, I'm sure the celebrations will intensify the further we go, but we're going to enjoy it. And guys, if they're going to enjoy it, that means we're all going to enjoy it too. 
Don't see how we can avoid it. Thanks, Dan, with our Coons.com sideline report. Over two million vehicles sold and counting. Dusty's point is well taken. Though. I mean, think about you're reporting in the middle of February. You're working out for a couple of weeks, then a month full of games, and the season just then starting. I mean, this is a long-term deal. And it doesn't happen every year. So the whole subdued, we, we have bigger things on our plate. Forget that, man. Let it rip. There's guys that go their whole career, play 15 years in the big leagues, don't get a pour champagne on someone's head. So forget that whole shake hands and be subdued. Let it rip. And baseball players love a good excuse to party, so they are going to have fun, and they should. So Gio goes 3-0 and on David Fries. He dropped a base hit into right field. First time up. That was right after the little dribbler down the line by Hanson. So a couple of base hits not hit that well opened the door for that comeback inning of theirs when they got two. Still 3 1, Phillies batting top of the fourth at New York. And Freeze had a big rip of that one. Now it stays 3 2. You got to feel for the change up 3 2. It's open right now. If you make it look like a strike for a little bit. And David Freeze, a free swinger, 137 strikeouts. But he draws the walk. And the Pirates have their leadoff man on for the second straight inning. Geo's second walk of the night. Cuts it back in the first, the other. There's the rookie Josh Bell. Hit the ball on the button first time up. Mike Maddox may be sensing something not quite right out for a quick visit. We saw the frustration of ball four and Geo. His body language trying to keep him calm and change his thought process. That's all this is. He thought that was strike three. It was a little bit in. But this is all about changing the thought process. He's still thinking about that last pitch. If I run out there and talk to him, now he's focused on his next pitch. Here's a 24-year-old rookie, Josh Bell. Even if he makes it out here, he's going to bat 300 in his first 100 big league ABs. Fastball misses. So he's 30 for 99. I knew you'd catch on to that very quickly. I'm on it tonight, man. It's a big game. Kid can hit. Four plus years in the minor leagues hit right around 300. He uh, was a second rounder who signed for five million dollars, a record for a young player who was not in the first round of the draft. Passed up a scholarship to Texas to come to the Pirates back in 11. Talking himself. I like it. One and two target in. No fights it off. Change up away works. Fastball in it was a strike. He was late. The reason the change up works, he can start his swing earlier here to get to that pitch he just missed. And he should be out front of a low change up down the way. He did go off speed with the curveball. And another long count developing here. 53 pitches through three. Wow. 
Swing and a miss. 93 upstairs with the heater. And for Gio Gonzalez, third K of the night, all swinging. Pitch looked like it was 193 the way Bell swung at it. He's climbing the ladder with two strikes. This one firm 93. A lot of late life at the end. He was a little bit tardy. Watch the balls by him. Maybe thinking about that curveball again. Tyone squaring to bunt, trying to get the lead run to scoring position here, fourth in. Two outs, top four at New York. The Phillies have the bases loaded. Michael Franco, FP's favorite player in the big leagues, is back. <laughs> It'd be even more favorite if he hits him out right here. I'll be the president of this fan club. Now. He can go up or down our list very quickly, one way or the other. But he has helped the Phillies get out to a lead. Swing and a foul. Oh, sorry, wrong game. <laughs> one one. And then a late bunt attempt, and Wilson Ramos gets the redirect on that one. Maybe a good question to ask Wilson. Where haven't you been hit this year? Yes, yeah. late in the season. He's ready to pitch with his gear on, I feel like. He's walking it off. Yeah, like Cervelli took one hard off the knee. You never see Wilson go all the way out to the mound. That one must have really hurt. Been a rough game tonight. Gregory Polanco lost on the third batter of the game when Bryce Harper's double deflected high off the left center field wall. And Polanco's face planted in that padding out there. Yeah, it might be padded, but he was moving quickly into that barrier. And Cervelli took one last inning, and now Wilson Ramos. And some less than great bunt attempts for Tyone. He'll be retired. Geo's fourth strikeout, two outs. Time to throw in a case for kids. Thirty-seven dollar donation by the Washington area Toyota dealers to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. Top of the order, Adam Frazier. Tyone single, second inning. He singled up the middle to give the Bucks their second run. Strike call on the heater. Geo's ahead. A tie ball game in the bottom of the fourth. If you're a young pitcher with runner on first, you know, that's something you have to be great at. At this level to help yourself out. Get the guy over. Zimmerman retreats to the bag, waits for the shovel from Stephen Drew. 3 3 ball game. And the fourth inning of Nationals baseball was brought to you by the RAV 4 Hybrid. All wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com tonight and then take it for.
Smile, it's Friday, brought to you by Dominion National, providing innovative, high-value dental and vision benefits to area employers and individuals. Smile, it's Friday. Some lady buckos are here. Top five, Worth Harper Rendon. 3-3 ball game. Tyone trying to put up his third consecutive zero. It'll be two, three, and four against him. Jason Worth, Bryce Harper, Anthony Rendon. Having a nice night. Top of the mitt on strike two. 77 pitches through four for Tayo. Geo 73 pitches. Jason on that breaking ball that was kind of hanging a bit way out ahead. Phillies couldn't add to their score. Worth is done. And now Kia in the driver's seat after we see strikeout number seven by Tyone. And Bryce Harper, FP, he indeed did drive it first time up. He did, just missed a home run. Gregory Polanco face planted the wall. Pretty good effort by Polanco. Great swing by Bryce. And then second time up. A little doinker into left. He'll take it. I like the left field approach so far by Bryce Harper. This one high in the air to center. McCutcheon under it. Two outs. Rendon is next. Anthony is grounded to third and fouled out to the second baseman. Got some good ribs. Tyone settling into this one a little bit. That he is. Six in a row retired. Eight of the last nine. And the only one in there, that spinning ground ball of Stephen Drews that went for a hit. No, he didn't go. Oh, he did. It's the first time we've seen that all year. The master of the check swing. Never gets called for it until now. Mike Everett, the crew chief. Mike Counts he, even, 1 1. Just broke up the street. Rendon turns on it, but it's foul. fans were feeling good in the second inning it was three nothing and that one really slowed down Anthony's bat David freeze another one two three and Tyone is on a roll Cervelli McCutcheon junk coming up.
Nats Park as the Nats, quote, sprint toward the postseason. With a special ticket, receive the Nats LED shoe safety light plus a pregame Budweiser or Bud Light. Visit nationals.com slash run. Speaking of running, the pierogi race. A little reluctant to cross the finish line, taunting. It's a hot pocket race. The president would never do that. Broccoli and cheddar and chicken one. Will the president show up at some point this weekend? They've been known to race in this yard. Bottom of the fifth for Geo, Cervelli, McCutcheon, and Gung. They went off script with that slow finish and Mike Everett the crew chief had to get him off the field no food allowed during competition on the field. Cervelli couple of ground balls to short. Those are like Mr. Potato Heads. They are. I feel like you should put their eyes where their mouth is. You know you used to do that with Mr. Potato Head right. You never put anything where it belonged. That was the good thing about Mr. Potato Head. You put the ear where his eye was, and you put an eye where his ear goes, and the lips where his nose goes, and then that was your Mr. Potato. Head. That's that's Oliver Onion there, by the way. That's Mr. Potato. Head. So I was told, potato, cheese, onion, jalapeno, Hannah. and you go show your parents like, look what I did to Mr. Potato Head. He's all deformed. Two balls, two strikes. And then you wait away for summer camp for a long time. PNC in their own ballpark takes us inside the numbers. So consecutive seasons with at least double digit wins, 150 strikeouts, lefties. It's a great list. Great list. And those are all active, of course. 2 2 to Cervelli. Her ball well inside. He is down. Gio got a little upset when he walked the leadoff guy last inning, but he's knocked down four in a row since. Nissan will track it. Kind of a buck shot at bat. Look at that. Down and in, down away, and then climbs a ladder for the strikeout. I'm telling you, the fastball is playing firm, but I think that might have been a changeup right there for strike three. Antonio Bastardo, one of seven Pirate left handers in their bullpen. They added Phil Coke today. Seven lefties. Their bullpen featuring 14 guys, and that's 15. When Giolito and Lados and Lopez are all listed. Some guy named Felipe Rivero down there. Yeah. Hard hit, left side, Rendon to his left. Retiring Andrew McCutcheon, always big for the Nets. Two outs, bases empty. Next up, Jung Ho Gun. Felipe Rivero, in case you're wondering, a 1 of 5 0 ERA. In 24 games with the Pirates, 35 strikeouts in 24 games. He has been dealing for Pittsburgh. There's talk around here that he's going to be their future closer, maybe as soon as next year. There's Felipe. We thought he was going to be a closer someday, maybe yeah. sooner than we all anticipated. Yeah, they uh, anointed Tony Watson a left-hander, their closer. He has 15 saves. When they lost Mark Melanson to the Nets. Gung is 0 for 2, but he had a hard ground ball to shortstop Danny Espinosa for an RBI last time up after McCutcheon's leadoff triple, third inning. Gio doesn't have to try to get too much of a hurry to end the inning. He's gone 3 0 here. He threw 2 0 changeup to Gung. You remember his last at bat, he was late on the fastball. Or maybe it was his first at bat, he was late on the fastball. That's a strike. 
Mets didn't score in the fourth. 3 1. Phillies batting top five at New York. He's okay. running a half inning behind us. That first at bat, though, was Gio out of the stretch. This gives him more time to get his leg kick going, but he's still late on the heater. Don't even mess around with anything else. Challenge him with the heater. That's by him. Wow. That's from 3 0 to 3 2. That's at a 3 1 count when you're gearing up, too. That's interesting that you got my attention with what you just said. We always think about pitching out of the windup, such an advantage for the pitchers. But you're saying it also gives the hitter a little more time to get things going because you don't have that quick move off the stretch. If you're a leg kick guy, yeah. You leg kick guy, you rather face a guy on the windup. When he's in the stretch, it's getting on you. So you're, you're, you're sitting up there going, when do I start my leg kick? He's got a nice slow windup. So now as a hitter, if I have a leg kick, I have a nice slow windup with you. And, and it helps my timing. That's just for leg kick guys, though. Yeah. That's good watch, stuff. Watch, watch how early he does it. And Gio, third walk of the night. John Rodriguez is next for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Rodriguez over for two, a strikeout, a bouncing ball to second. You know who Mike Maddox is now? He's Adam LaRoche. You remember when Gio would start and Adam LaRoche would go to the mound all the time to yeah. keep him calm and he had one of his better years. So as soon as Mike Maddox sees any sign of danger he's out there to calm Gio, go down, Gio Gonzalez down like Adam LaRoche used to. Oliver Perez, Reynaldo Lopez moving around out there. All they're right. they're okay. matching pulls with Felipe Rivera. Everybody act like you're doing something and then yeah. we can talk to you. Gio's got the line drive. Rodriguez a rocket. And that's to the backhand side. Quite a reaction by the Nats left handed. Game summary is brought to you by Cox's new contour. Get right to the good stuff. 3-3 three three as we go to the top of the sixth. Congratulations, Ryan Zimmerman. RBI double in the second for your 1,500th career hit. Danny Espinosa hit one super far for his 23rd. Gio Gonzalez has been battling, getting the job done, finding a way, keeping his ball club in this one. Yeah, Gio at 91 pitches, 57 strikes. Familiar left-hander to the Nats, 31-year-old. 
Antonio Bustardo, longtime Philly. And then with the Mets at the start of this season, this will be his 24th game with the Pirates. 21 innings, 13 hits, and 20 Ks. A fastball 92, he'll sink it for Seaman. Slider 83, occasional changeup at 85. Wilson Ramos first up against him. Wilson two for eight, a walk three RBIs against the lefty. Cut the fastball too, as you just saw right there. Wilson struck out twice by Jamison Tyone tonight. Two of his seven in five innings. Ramos to right center. See you later. And McCutcheon hardly moved on that one either. The Buffalo number 22. RBI number 80. The Nats are back on top. Well, that just made things a whole lot more interesting, didn't it? Two horns up. Take off my helmet, please. Wilson Ramos with his 22nd of the year, putting the Nats up four to three. That was some kind of shot to the opposite field. Josh Bell, the rookie, started chasing it, but Cutchin just took about two steps and froze. I mean, you, that's opposite field. He almost hit it in the river. Yeah, that was pretty far up the seats out there. It was the last row in right center field. How about if you're in the Nats clubhouse right now? Put the plastic up, take it down. Put the plastic up, take it down. I don't know. They're getting a workout down there. Yeah, look where that landed. Two tonight for the Nats, Espinosa and Ramos. Nationals have hit 195 home runs. Andrews had a two for two night. Ground rule double, left field corner. Launching ball to the right side of the infield. Against Bastardo, Carrero for two. Right in there, and Drew strikes out. Show me that home run again. That was a far tater. Buffalo homer. Fastball up and away, just above the belt. You think Wilson watched that one? Yeah. Just misses going out of here on a hop into the river. The Buffalo strikes with one of the biggest home runs he's ever hit, maybe. There's the ball. Look like they rubbed it up very much, does it? Yeah, a lot of mud on it. Ryan Zimmerman, one for two, extra base hit. An RBI, a run scored. Gustardo, troublesome for Ryan over the years. Two walks, five strikeouts, 0 for 10. For 10 anymore. He's going to plug the gap again. Ryan Zimmerman, a two for three night with a pair of doubles. And that easy pop thing Dusty was talking about around the cage today, he wanted Ryan to hear him saying that. And FB, he's not swinging real hard, he's just hitting it real hard. Well, that's some really good stuff going on besides the obvious here tonight. Bryce Harper with a couple of hits the other way. Wilson Ramos, who's been scuffling a little bit, he started to pick it up lately, hits a homer, and Ryan Zimmerman picking up. Where he left off the other night in Miami. So the obvious thing is the Nats are ahead, the Mets are behind. There's some really good things going on in the middle of this game. 
seven extra base hits five doubles by the Nationals tonight. Zoran Zimmerman is five for his last 11. With Danny Espinosa one for two with a home run. Ray Searich to the mound. Let, let him have a nice long trip. Let the Mets game catch up to us. Leave him out there. He can stay out there all he wants. No worries. Jared Hughes, one of their seven right handers. So the Nats box featuring extra base hits all over the place. Bryce double single, Ramos homer, Drew double single, Zimmerman two doubles, Danny Espinosa, big blow at the early part of the game, a two run homer, and Gio checked in with a two bat. Gio has thrown 91 pitches, has the lead, on deck at least for now. Danny Espinosa, one for eight against Pistardo. Stepping in. with one out. Danny Espinosa eyeballing that one all the way in. Count big time in his favor now. Home runs for children a couple tonight by the Nats every time it happens two hundred fifty dollars to the children's national health system thanks to our Washington D.C. Lexus dealers Lexus the pursuit of perfection. 2 0 pitch. I thought you can say it again. The 2 0 pitch the start of really working slowly. That's have rattled him with a couple of extra base hits in the sixth. Three and zero. Oh. Getting close to a great opportunity to, for Geo to possibly bunt a couple of runners ahead. Pitch walk. Gio looking to the dugout, and he will be pinch hit four here in the sixth. Dusty going for the kill right here. This Izzy. So Gio, five innings. Three runs on five hits, walk three. Yeah, None of the walks hurt him. The rough second inning, really, and that was it. Gave up the triple to McCutcheon a ground out. But I like this move by Dusty Baker. He got five out of Geo. He stands to be the winner here tonight if the Nats can hold on. And he's trying to pad his lead. I like it. It's a good move. And then Clint Hurdle will go to the right hander, Jared Hughes. Nats on top.
tough innings, but he put a couple of zeros on the board. Pitcher of record with a possible W out there. As an answer, up by, by a run and try to put a few more on the Pirates here at the top of the sixth inning. Try to do that against 31 year old right hander Jared Hughes. Yeah, Hughes, a three pitch guy, fastball 93, change up 86. And he's got a slider to go with it at 86 as well. So I think all in all, when you talk about Geo's night, that three could have turned into four, five, or six. He did a nice job of calming down and keeping his ball club in the game and not letting the wheels come off. And he's got to feel good about that. Stands to win a major league game, and that's all you can ask when you take him out. Here's IZ. Dusty likes this matchup, doesn't it? Four for six. A homer against Hughes' career, so not that big of a deal for manager and pinch hitter that a right hander came in. Yeah, you're wondering what he put. Goodwin up there, somebody else left handed, but no, with those numbers, he's got the matchup he wants. Zimmerman at second, Espinosa behind him. And Heisey on a tough fastball, inner edge. Lays off, it's still a called strike. Mercedes Benz will track it. Thought it was a little in. It's a tough one to keep fair, even if you do swing. In there again, but well off the plate. 1 1. The Nats have seven extra base hits tonight, the ninth time they've done it. Most recently against the Rockies, middle of August. And a lot of that ball game left to get a couple more. Pretty good career numbers pinch hit and I'd say. One of the best in the business right now no doubt about it. Two on one out and a one two pitch. He made an offer. What a take. <laughs> might have caught a break. This one's closer than his first strike. It might have even been a strike. Yeah, that's a strike. Live to fight another pitch. Now you got a hack. You take a close one, you're swinging all the way on the next one. Unless it's just over your head or something. Coda Glover is up. Heisey. Right field line drifting for the foul ball and David Fries drops it. And he'll probably get an error for that. His 10th error of the year. Chris Heisey's a cat with nine lives right now. He took strike three still hitting. He popped up. The first base, he dropped it. He's still hitting. I mean, he's basically got his third chance to keep this at bat alive. David Freeze kind of nonchalance this, just over the shoulder, not two hands. Ball hits him in the heel. Freeze making his 33rd start at first base. He's usually a third baseman, but pop up any big league up. guy should be able to make that play. Chris is he still alive? It's a cockroach at that. You can't kill him. Why is he trying to make it hurt? Three two again. Swing and a miss as Hughes gets in. Inside the numbers brought to you by Jeep on Trey Turner. Since the All-Star break among all players. 
And I mentioned he's won for his last 16 now, but so great up until this week. The numbers just there in so many different categories. Have the bases loaded with one out in the bottom of the fifth, three to one ball game. Granderson in. Trey facing Jared Hughes for the first time. Worth waiting. Trey and Jason Dine to do some damage tonight. They're 0 for 6 from 3 on down. It's been pretty solid for the Nets. 2 0 with two outs. And Turner, a dribbler. If it's fair, that's a hit. Put it in your pocket. He faked the throw, hoping Zimmerman would round third. The bases are loaded for Jason Worth. Well, when you're hot, you're hot. You get hits in all sort of different ways. And Trey Turner with the swing and butt will take it. The only hope the Pirates had is that that will foul, and it wasn't anywhere near foul. Well, now Worth with the busted open opportunity. He's only faced Hughes twice, 0 for 2. Jason, as a rule, doesn't go too many ABs in a game without at least getting a board. Ball one. Granderson has just delivered a base hit. 3 2. Philly still on top. This is getting interesting now. Two and Oda Worth. It's getting real interesting. Jason has a chance to pad the lead. Oh, Hex breaking loose at City Field. The Mets may be the scrappiest team in the big leagues, period. We talk about nine lives. Great numbers on two and one this year. Worth 20 home runs, 66 RBIs. That is ball three. I'll oh, get you a good one and hit it in the river. Watch this swing if it's a strike. <laughs> three and one softball numbers. Slow pitch. Way inside, the Nationals lead five to three. And Jason Worth does manage to find a way to get aboard. RBI number 67 on his 67th walk. Bullpen, not a stellar sixth inning. Three hits, two walks. And one of their latest additions to the bullpen, left hander Zach Phillips. He's in for Harper in a moment.
things going on this ball game. Some good signs. Bryce Harper driving one the other way for a double his first time up in the first. Then how about Ryan Zimmerman? Just smooth swinging a double to right center for hit number 1500. Got RBI with that. And then the Buffalo almost went swimming in the river. Buffalo swim? Not sure about that one, but that was his 22nd home run. Lefty lefty Bryce Harper, who will face 30 year old lefty Zach Phillips, previous big league time with Baltimore in 11 and 12, Miami in 13, and his fourth ball game for the Pirates this season. Bryce Harper two for three bases loaded two outs and that is back to the screen but it comes right back to Cervelli and nobody had a chance to even think about advancing on that one that had to be a cross up no Cervelli not going out to the mound he just whiff on this might have they tried the trick play throw it off the bricks let it come straight back and we'll get a cheap out no yep. fish ain't biting. Espinosa third, Turner second. Great speed there and worth behind him. One of the best base runners in the business. 1 0 pitch. Off speed. High strike. It's 1 1. A fastball slider change from Phillips. Fastball average in 90. Slider 78, change up 83. Bryce working on a nice night. One one pitch. Strike call 92. Seemingly looked quicker than that. So the Mets have scored three and the Phillies are still pitching with a couple of men on board second and third one out. In the fifth up there at City Field. Harper just reaching to get a piece of that one. The one thing the Nats can control is getting the magic number to one by the end of the night. And whatever happens in New York, so be it. So it's Espinosa who walked, Turner who got that infield hit, and then Jason Worth who walked to an RBI to put the Nationals on top 5 3. Bryce, the eighth net to bat here in the sixth. And the Pirates have employed three pitchers. Rendon's next, and they could use another. That's in there to Bryce Harper. The Nats will lead three. They've stranded seven, but they pick up a couple and have retaken the lead.
some special things this weekend. Problem is the Mets are now up seven to three. It's like Michael Conforto just went deep up at City Field, but get ready for some great baseball this October and next year. 2017 Nats Plus memberships on sale. That's the way you guarantee postseason tickets for this October and access to the 18 All-Star Game. It's all exclusive experiences, rewards, and access. Call 202-675-NATS or nationals.com slash Nats Plus and join up. Cota Glover, Pirates will see him for the first time. 23-year-old right-hander, 18th appearance for the Nats. Just 12 hits in 19 innings, 15 Ks. The rookie Alan Hansen first up he's a switch hitter moving to that side of the plate where he is three for ten. Coda has him 0 2. Pulls a base hit, off speed pitch. And the rookie, always happens, doesn't it? Alan Hansen, not supposed to play tonight. Polanco gets hurt, he goes two for three. So the Pirates box score Frazier one for three, RBI single. McCutcheon on twice with a walk and a triple. Gung with an RBI grounder. The aforementioned two hits for Hansen and David Freeze has one. Not to mention an RBI single by their starter, Jamison Tyone. 590 Nets, 362 Pirates. One one to freeze. Wow. Ninety seven from Coda Glover. Pass the mound. Tough play and sliding after he grabbed it, Stephen Drew. Seen some interesting things on this infield. That might be the best hit David Freeze has ever got his whole life. Look at this. Just severe damage. It checks up nicely, and Stephen Drew had to hurry because the ball was in the air for so long. Look at it just kind of sit there. No chance to get it out of your glove, so David Freeze will take a million of those. There's probably pine tar on that baseball. Dusty Baker to the mound. So Glover, the one that hurt was 0 2 on the first hitter. Threw him an 80 mile an hour pitch, hands in the base hit, Freeze a dunker. So, Howard's trying to come back.
Right. They're down three nothing tied the Nats five to three now they have a couple of guys on base and for Mark Zepchinski, 31 year old lefty his 12th appearance with the Nats 10 innings seven hits eight strikeouts. Yeah, big time sink on his 91 mile an hour fastball. He's a ground ball machine. Slider change to go with it. And 68.8% of Zepchinski's outs are on the ground. Dusty Baker would love a double play. Pirates have seen the lefty in the past in the same division for a while. With St. Louis, 2011 12 and part of 13. Josh Bell hasn't seen him. The rookie is 0 for 2 tonight. Pitcher's spot on deck for the Bucks. In the air, right behind second. That'll be a non productive out infield fly rule in effect. Grabbed by Danny Espinosa for the big first out. Like I said, he's a ground ball machine. <laughs> Take one any way you can get one in that situation. And Jason Rogers, a rookie first baseman, will be the pinch hitter. Is he Jolly Rogers because he plays for the Pirates? Let's see how the event goes. Mike Maddox, a quick sprint to the mound. Spells up Chinsky without looking. Uh, let me guess. R Z E P C Z Y N S K I. Nailed it. I think. Thank you. I did. Who knows the name? I could. He's become in my scorebook R Z E P apostrophe S K I. I just put Z E P. <laughs> hey, and the great thing is when you look him up online, you type four letters and there he is. <laughs> Two on, one out. And uh, Mark goes low and away to Jason Rogers, 28 year old infielder, outfielder. And that's actually uh, saw him a little bit back in 14, maybe 15 when he was with Milwaukee. Remember that slugger Brewers have now, Keon Broxton. These two are traded for each other. Think about going to Ollie's Bargain Outlet tomorrow. Probably be cheaper than the other side. <laughs> so thinking negatively. 1 0. Dusty looking for that ground ball. Zepchinski's got better numbers against righties than he does lefties. That's why Dusty Baker brought him in. He wants a grounder bad. Left-handed batting leadoff guy Adam Frazier on deck. Strike call up in the zone. It's three and one. Three nets, 16 hits in the game. Oh. 
And him all locked up on a pitch that ended up way out of the strike zone. Well, that's a good call by Wilson Ramos. You got a young hitter up there. He's going auto swing 3 1 count, right? He's betting the house on a fastball and he's going to do something special. And then you throw him a 3 2 slider, or 3 1 slider, excuse me, to get to 3 2. You realize about halfway through his swing, he shouldn't have swung. There's Tanner Roark and Anthony Rendon checking it out. Nats have turned 139 double plays. Ball four. It's low. Base is loaded. Lefty lefty matchup now Adam Frazier. Who's never faced Zepchinski. Phillies get a run back. Darren Ruff has just gone deep. Actually, a two run shot. Seven to five. But business to take care of here. Center, but it's coming back to Worth. Pirates will pick up a run. The Nats will get a badly needed second out, and it's a five to four game. Frazier hit it well. He has two RBIs tonight. Lots of like about Adam Frazier, at least based on one game. You know, came in hitting 325. He's one for three with a sack fly. Struck the ball in the barrel three times tonight. Gets his ball club within one, and here comes Dusty Baker. Unlimited inventory in the bullpen. You can go situational all night long. Sir Francisco Cervelli, the next hitter. So here comes Blake Trinan out of the Nats bullpen. Kind of early for him, but it's a very important situation. Pirates. So much going on in Pittsburgh and New York tonight. So here's Blake Trinan, 28 year old right hander, 70th appearance of the year, 60 last year. And Blake's been great 64 innings, 61 Ks, 47 hits. A two seam fastball, low to mid 90s, or mid 90s to upper 90s, I should say correctly. Slider to go with it. The slider's been Blake's good friend lately. He's been throwing it for strikes early in the count to steal the strike, and then he's been putting people away with it. Seems like that's been the progression for Blake this year, the slider. Francisco Cervelli faces him for the first time. Two on, two out. Tying runs at second in a 5 4 game. 
Gio got Cervelli out three times tonight. I don't know if he went 0 for 3 against any left hander this year. Front door with the slider, strike one. He's stealing strike one with the slider, then he's bouncing it, throwing it more firm late in the count. And Cervelli's a guy that likes to go up the middle the other way, so that two seamer off the slider plays. He's not a guy that really loves to pull the baseball unless he's looking in there cheating to get to it. Nasty. Nasty. Yeah. Lock him up. Talk about running out of bat. Well, he was thinking like I was thinking. He's a catcher. He's like, he had tried to get that fastball in on my hands. I'm going to cheat to get to it. And he dropped another slider. So that was a good job by Wilson Ramos. After what he saw, will he triple up? He will. And it's outside. Got him four in a row to get the strikeout. Lake Trina continues to have a fantastic 2016 season. PNC Park right across the river into downtown Pittsburgh the Golden Triangle we're going seventh inning and we have freight rail works do up for you Anthony Rendon talked about his RBI prowess earlier in the night he's looking for his first base hit and Wilson Ramos another go ahead RBI with a sixth inning homer tonight and then Stephen Drew 316 career against the Pirates even though they called his grounder in the third a hit and then changed it to an error. Phil Coke, 34 year old lefty, just joining the Pirates in time for this series. Cash deal with the Yankees yesterday. And this veteran has been around in the big league since 08 with the Yankees. Back with them this year, he made just four appearances. Big league time with the Tigers, the Cubs, and the Blue Jays. Anthony Rendon gets the leadoff assignment, top seven. So a lefty to face two right handed batters starting this inning. Rendon to right. Ball's well hit. Bell going back on the track. And then two steps before he can brace himself. One out. Ball was touched. Looked like it might have had another gear to get over the head of Josh Bell. Good swing by Anthony Rendell. 
Check out the hack one more time. Feel like he got something off speed. Try backdoor slider. His swing has looked better than 0 for 4 tonight. He's had some good passes. Wilson Ramos hit one a mile the other way last time up. That's really something when you have a catcher these days that drives in 80 runs. And hits 300 for that matter, all yeah. banged up. In the squat for over 100 games. Yeah, we talked about the ratio of games he's played to the total games. Number 153 for the Nats tonight. And for Wilson Ramos, it's his 129th. Seriously, just get in a catcher stance in your living room right now for about 10 minutes. And then see how you feel tomorrow morning. <laughs> and imagine doing that for over 100 games. Those guys know all about it. Jose Lobaton, Pedro Severino. That's not counting the foul balls that hit you everywhere. It's counting the, count the back swings that hit you in the helmet. Just get in the squat. Just do it. See how you feel tomorrow. Won't be able to walk. So how do you feel tonight when you come out of it after that 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> 3 0 to Wilson Ramos. He was hacking and it's foul. Oh, go back to the sixth inning for Wilson. Home run number 22. Fastball up. He didn't sit there too long. He admired it just enough. He admitted the contract, the thought of the contract and all that stuff about a month or so ago was affecting his play. And there was reports this week that the Nets offered him a three year deal somewhere in the $30 million range. And he said no. So. And as a free agent that can get in your head especially when you're having a good season because now you're like wow I could really get paid. Well look at this. Another two hit game for Wilson Ramos. He had four hits and 12 at bats in Miami. Just love watching him go the other way and it's such a lesson for hitters and fans everywhere that you can do big time damage in the big leagues when you're not pulling the ball all the time. Hands in the right slot. Nicely done. Don't pull it when they let him, but wow, just that right center field thing is so cool for him. So here's Stephen Drew, one for three tonight. Double number 250 in the second inning. Lefty lefty with Phil Coke. Strike one. Nets into double digits on the hits with 10. Way inside with the fastball. Andrew pulls it hard to second. Four, six, three. Time for a big crowd to stretch in Pittsburgh. What a ball game tonight. Lots of things happening. Five, four, Nets.
action at the ballpark tonight. Skull bar. Oh my God. Cool. Five four Nets. Bottom of the seventh coming up. Blake Trinan still out there. Trying into McCutcheon. Quite a power matchup right here. Andrew McCutcheon tonight, a walk, a triple, a ground ball. Two for four career with a couple of RBIs against the Nets. Right hander targeted from Ramos. You know what that means. That's that whistling fastball. And it's 2 0. Oh. It's a big at bat, it's a hot hitter. One run game. And getting late. Turn tight. And a 2 1 with nobody out. Gio walked three Pirates tonight. Mark Sepchinski walked one. None of the guys who walked scored, but that last walk did load the bases for a sack fly to get the Pirates a run. Shortstop Danny Espinosa on the charge. McCutcheon flying and Danny gets him by a step. Well McCutcheon's running better. Danny Espinosa knows that and he charges this just hard enough to get him by a step. Good hustle by McCutcheon better play by Espinosa. You see the transfer from glove to bare hand quick in that big arm. And a that a boy from Blake Trinan. Yeah, both guys doing their jobs. One throwing a ground ball, the other one taking care of the rest. And here's Gung, who's 0 for 1 against Blake Career. Nice inning for Dusty in which to leave Trinan in there. Right handed batters. Cutchin, Gung, and Rodriguez. Two and oh. See Blake trying it out of the stretch gun with that leg kick. He, he has to time it right, get it going early to get to that 97. That's why I like the fastball versus gun. Until he shows you that out of the stretch he can time it, mm -hmm. he's struggling, right? For his last 19. Yep. Walk last time. RBI grounder earlier. Great pitch. Inside edge. What's a hitter to do with that? And usually when leg kick guys are struggling, it's a timing thing. Watch. He got it down too early that time. He couldn't pull the trigger. Probably didn't like the location of it. But you can just tell by his takes, he's struggling on the fastball. We'll count with one out. Not comfortable ABs against this guy.
Here's Felipe Rivero. Felipe White Shoes Johnson, check it out. <laughs> does he just have his pants pulled over his whole fleet or does he have white cleats? I think he has white cleats. I think it's yes and yes. 3 2 again with one out. Every base runner important here. And the Pirates will receive their fifth walk of the night. Now it's Trident and Rodriguez. I'm so gun shy right now with the rosters expanded. Every time a guy gets on, I'm waiting for a manager to come out of the dugout and make yeah. a pitcher change. Pirates are on their fifth pitcher. The Nats have used four. And that's relatively tame for what we've seen this month. Slider to the inside edge. Oliver Perez. That's where you go that two seam fastball let it eat and get a ground ball. Get out of dodge. Like I said, this is where you throw that slider and he misses it by a mile. Well, you know what? We can't fault him, I guess, for staying with the slider, huh? It's been so nasty. Dirty. That's Francisco Cervelli from last inning. So an 0-2 count here. Throws 95 97. It's effortless. Just into the 10 o'clock hour here at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Nats three in the second, Pirates two. They got a run in the third. Nats two in the sixth, Bucks a run in the bottom of the inning. By four with a ways to go here yet. Eight outs to get. And that slider fouled off. First and third one out for the Phillies in the top of the seventh seven to five ball game so they're fighting. One two pitch. Base hit. Rodriguez rolling one through. Sometimes you get the ground ball and it's perfectly placed. Now the switch inning rookie Hansen coming in. I just still love the sinker for the double play, especially when it's 97. I just think that's his best weapon. The slider has obviously been the evolution of Blake Trinan, but his bread and butter is still that 97 that runs on your hands if you're right handed. All right. It's taking so long from the Pittsburgh dugout. Hanson do up. I think the bat boy's going to hit. He's got a couple of bats. He's ready. Let him get in there and take some rips. Well, we're hearing Jaso, John Jaso from the. Thank you, Tim Timmons. Okay, but we need John Jaso. I mean, yeah, it's a good idea for him to hit right here, but being present would be part of the process, I believe. And then now Dusty Baker's going to come make a change. Oh my, this is. Funny because Jaso has not been announced by the PA announcer, but I guess when the umpire announces it to the manager, that's all you need to know. Jaso to pinch it here in the seventh. So the Nats will counter with the lefty, Oliver Perez, a moment ago.
Now there's Joe Ross. Sunday at Atlanta. Three solid innings. Five strikeouts. Didn't walk anybody. One earned run. Ivan Nova went five and one so far. And nine starts with the Pirates. Coming off a loss. But they got a couple of former Yankees over here now. Nova and Phil Coke. Gets you going at 6.30 with Nats Extra tomorrow night on Masson. Now Jordy Mercer will bat for the Pirates because Oliver Perez is into the game. For the Nats, the 35-year-old lefty making his 62nd appearance. Right, two pitches, two seam fastball slider to go with it. Arm angle's different, delivery's different. Phillies have the bases loaded one out. That score still seven to five Mets. Jordy Mercer, one for three career against Oliver Perez. So the Nats force Lynn Hurdle to burn John Jaso, and then he goes with Mercer. Tying runs at second base, one out, seventh inning. Kind of a subdued crowd here at Pittsburgh tonight. Usually they're going nuts in a situation like this. Seventh inning, one run game, tying run on second. Well, you cannot tell me that fans don't get worn out every night watching 13 to 14 pitchers pitch in a ball game two teams total if they don't change the call ups after this season it'll probably never happen because this has been the craziest September I've ever seen in terms of numbers of personnel this is like zombies in the bullpen you just, they just keep coming over the wall <laughs> You think you got one here? Yeah, comes yeah, you, think, you think you just headshot one and they just keep coming over the wall and they yeah. keep coming and then zombie pinch hitters and it's just crazy. Please do something, MLB. Inside, three and two. Start, Start the rest wanting that call. To Clint Hurdle. Jordy Mercer, pretty good contact guy. I've seen Clint hit and run with Jordy Mercer before. Not the greatest wheels on the bases, but good enough. And you're betting on contact from your hitter. You got a strike thrower on the mound. Let's see what they do. Strike thrower for the most part on the mound. Yeah, right handed batter on deck, David Freeze. So this could be a one batter thing for Oliver Perez. Right side. Ryan Zimmerman drawing a beat on it on the track. Two down. Big out. All right, we'll see. Here comes Dusty. He was grabbing the handrail, about to come up the steps, and then he stopped. So Perez evidently stays against Freeze, who is three for three against him career. Yep, here he comes. Double it, switch. Someone's coming over that wall in right and left center field. You can't stop him. All right, Sean Kelly. I've never heard rosters booed before, but it just happened here in Pittsburgh.
Brought to you by Dominion. Depend on us for more than energy. And by Roy Rogers. Check out their lineup. Roast beef, fried chicken, and burgers. Visit RoyRogersRestaurants.com. The Nats about to employ their sixth pitcher. And that would be five of them in the last two innings. Sean Kelly, 32-year-old right-hander, making his 64th appearance at career high. Fastball low to mid 90 slider to complement it. 77 strikeouts just 10 walks you're going to pound the zone you know that. But opponents know that too so they come up hacking against Sean it's. Up to him to throw a quality strike and he usually does. David freeze two for four against him career. He went slider first pitch low and away. And then Wilmer Defoe will bat ninth on the double switch. And replace Stephen Drew at second. So the Nats pitcher are pitchers in the number six spot. You kind of paint yourself into a corner if you go slider, slider to a 2 0 count. Now the hitter knows you got to come with the fastball. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to throw one, but if I'm hitting right now, I am all in on a heater. Late for 92. Two one pitch. And it goes long now to three and one. Josh Bell on deck, the switch hitting outfielder. And Kelly back in the strike zone. It's three and two. David Freeze didn't like it. Sean Kelly will take it. I thought it was close. And that's because David Freeze started to throw his bat. Everybody booed, but that was a good pitch. Not something you want to offer at in three one count. Gung at second. Rodriguez at first on the move here with a two out payoff pitch. In a one run game, Nets on top five to four. Out of play. Reese is at a blooper to right and a blooper to the right side of the infield. Fall in for hits tonight. A walk in between. Runners going. Swing and a miss. Kelly gets the strikeout. Now the Pirates have stranded eight runners. Freeze talking to Tim Timmons. And this one into the eighth inning.
And a lot of folks have left. This place was pretty full when the game started. So after about three hours and uh, 10 minutes of baseball, we're into the eighth inning. Here he is, Felipe Rivero, 25 year old. Originally signed by Tampa Bay as a free agent. Pretty good Nat in his time. Came to the Nats in the Nathan Karn Jose Lobatone deal. And then the Nats traded him over here in the Mark Melanson transaction. So you know the Arsenal, you've seen Felipe before, but did you see the right hand or left handed average 302 against? That was a problem when he was a Nat getting left handers out. But his fastball's mid to upper 90s slider and change to go with it. The slider is filthy when it's right. 47 games with the Nats, 24 now 25. With the Pirates and FP told you about that one and a half ERA. So since the trade, numbers are great. Faces Ryan Zimmerman, then Danny Espinosa, then Wilmer Defoe here, top of the eighth. And yeah, what's going through Felipe's mind right now? And what's going to be going through Mark Melanson's mind if this stays the same? First time back in Pittsburgh facing his old teammates. My game plan would be exactly what Ryan just did make him throw strikes. Well, he got him on three. One out, eighth inning. Pirates throw the ball around the infield, and Adam Frazier's back at second base where he was in the game for just a couple of outs, and then Matt Joyce takes over in left field. So Joyce in the number nine spot. Was that a changeup or a fastball right there from Felipe at 91? <laughs> I'm wondering what that last pitch was to Ryan Zimmerman. Well, if it was straight, it went down a little bit. Changeup, huh? I think it was a change. Maybe he can bring it. Over Defoe waiting his first at bat here. It's interesting. I was talking to Don Mattingly about Jose Fernandez's changeup the other night and how good it was. And he said they're trying to replicate Zach Greinke's changeup. And what it is, it's the same grip as you have on your fastball. You just grip it a little tighter in the back of your hand. You push it deeper into your hand and just throw it as hard as you can. So if your fastball for Fernandez comes out 97, the changeup comes out 90. But there's no circle grip. There's no split grip. Mm -hmm. Mattingly learned that from. Zach Greinke and he's teaching Jose Fernandez that and Jose Fernandez was the best I've ever seen him the other night against the Nats with that changeup. Yeah that's great. You get to see that for the next 10 years. Huh? <laughs> In the you know, least. He's a guy you don't like but you take on your team any day. Sure. There's Danny's home run ball. It's just lonely. Yeah, I'll have to trim those hedges at some point. I'm just a ball sitting here by myself. I once was in the game. Now I'm just home run number 23. But it did count for something big. Now I'm part of the landscape here at PNC Park. It's a sad ending. Well, I guess it's not a sad ending. I mean, some balls just hit the dirt and they're out of there. At least he died a hero. Some some balls relegated to BP for the rest they, of their they existence. They put like a tombstone there. Home run number 23 for Danny Espinosa. Ball died a hero. The date. Whenever the ball was made is the born date. In Taiwan somewhere. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Rivero dropping 81 on Danny. So with more on Felipe, here's Dan. Bob, I caught up with Felipe Rivero earlier today. He admitted to me that the trade to the Pirates caught him totally by surprise. He was getting ready for the game against the Giants out in San Francisco. He was getting set to come out onto the field and then found out he'd been dealt to Pittsburgh. He said it took him a handful of days to kind of get used to the news. He really enjoyed his time with the Nats. He said, I was expecting to be with the organization a lot longer, but that's baseball. It's a business. You're here one day, you're there another. 
Yeah, and I think we all did too. I mean, this was a building block for the future of the Washington bullpen. But when you're in a pennant race and you've had closer issues and you need a Mark Melanson, that trumps a whole lot of things. Well, I think some trades are great for both teams, and this is a perfect example. This is going to be their future closer. Mark Melanson's an established one, and that's what the Nats needed. Defoe puts a charge into one right at McCutcheon. The Nats go in order in the eighth. Still a long way to go in this 5 4 game. Now the Mets are not cooperating. They're up nine to five on the Phillies as the innings are getting a little ugly for Philadelphia. Nats on top five four here. So hey, take care of it tonight, and then it's all in your hands tomorrow. Yeah, I like that. Get it down to one tonight. Hang on, win here, and then a lot of my friends from D.C. are driving up as we speak. A lot are driving up tomorrow. I'm expecting this place to be a home game for the Nats tomorrow. So first things first hold on here. Very important to get it to one then it's in your own hands. Sean Kelly in the eighth couple of left handers here in fact three of them. The switch hitter Josh Bell to start. Go for three so far tonight Bell is a left handed batter. Twenty seven for eighty eight hitting three oh seven. I mean take over PNC tomorrow if you don't have anything to do for the weekend. What is it three and a half hour drive. Yeah. Party in FP's room after the game let's go. Massa will cover the damage. Right? I don't know. Right? That sounds pretty extensive. Come on. I think you can set yourself up for a pretty extensive bill. Price is going to get it. Paul carries about 360. Out to right center. Matt Joyce will be next. Johnny Holiday, Mr. Baseball, Mr. Football at this time of the year is in the studio tonight. With Ray Knight. It's an Nats Extra Post Game Show presented by W. B. Mason. There's Matt Joyce, longtime American leaguer, mostly with Tampa Bay. With the Angels last year. Pirates signed him as a free agent in February. 259 career hitter. With the Tigers early in his career. And then several with the race. He's got full side pop, 12 homers, 41 RBIs. Right call, a beauty. Joyce one for six career against Sean. That ball is jacked to center. Going back Turner. Trey will pull it in. 
about 385 feet away. John Kelly using the big part of the ballpark here. Two outs. A little trade time for you. Nice route by Trey Turner. This ball was struck right on the nose and watched the quick break. The nice route. He opens up to the right side. Not a problem. You think he's NFL fast? Could he be, he'd be a receiver in the NFL? I think he could. Oh, I definitely think so. Probably wouldn't send him across the middle too often, but. Such acceleration. So here's Adam Frazier. One for three tonight. RBI single and a sack fly. Is that a good night? One for one career with a double against Sean Kelly, who's trying to get this to the ninth inning for a former Pittsburgh closer now employed by the visiting team. I think the Sean Jackson beats Trey Turner in this though. Just saying. Okay, one guy in the league can beat a, <laughs> a baseball guy. That's pretty good. I like to see it though. Yeah. If he ever puts pads on him, we're all gonna tackle him. One one pitch. Another one to center. How about Sean Kelly? Strikes out David Freeze to end the seventh. One, two, three in the eighth. Top of the order coming up. One inning to go. Pittsburgh We're going to the top of the ninth, top of the order for the Nationals. And they will be facing right hander Juan Nicasio, who's been very solid for the Pirates. 47th game. He's made 12 starts. He has 10 wins, so he swooped in out of the bullpen to grab some W's this year. A three pitch guy, fastball slider primarily, fastball 94. Slider works off it at 86, occasional change up in the mid 80s. 10 to 5 Mets in the bottom of the seventh one out. They're still there. Okay. That's enough of that. Tell them to keep driving. Yeah. Keep driving. Get your car right now. We'll pregame tonight. Yeah. Be thinking ahead though about accommodations. Nah. Worry about that later. I already said, party in my room. I got you. Yeah, yeah. We've all said things we would later regret. <laughs> I do that every night. Top of the ninth. Trey Turner infield hit right down the third base line last time. He has faced Nicasio, who pitched in D.C. when the Pirates were there, middle of July. It was the first series after the All Star break. Trey Turner's due. He hasn't hit a home run in a whole day, even though it was an off day. He's due. And the slider away, ball one. Worth and Harper to follow here in the ninth. And I think you probably know who's going through his routine in the bullpen. Turner gets jammed. 
And that's Frazier back at second base, grabbing that one for the first out. Not used to that side of the bullpen. That's got to be weird for him right now already. And they still have his stuff hanging up. <laughs> the shark, Mark Melanson. They got all his stuff. It's still right there. That's his pitcher. That's a shark. Finally got something right. And that's where he's used to sitting over there with his buddies. Got to be weird, right? Yeah. He should get a huge, huge ovation when he comes in. Mark the shark. Nicasio inside to Worth. Jason 0 for 2 career against the right hander. 0 for 3, but a big at bat back in the sixth with right now, which right now is the difference in the game. His walk with the bases loaded. Now he's going to gash a base hit the other way. So Jason Worth finds a way to get on base his last two times tonight. And here comes Bryce Harper. Nice piece of hitting by Jason on base for the second time. Nicely done. Checking in with the knock. Where have you ever seen a sign that says don't feed the sharks? I feel like that's just common sense, right? The other one says eat more chicken. I mean, if, I mean, the only way you're feeding the sharks is if you're swimming. I'm not feeding the shark ever. Bryce Harper 0 for 1 against Nicasio. Scared of shots. 2 for 4 tonight. Now that Boston Ball Club won again tonight at Tampa Bay. Nine in a row for the Red Sox, and they've won 90 games. That's how you want to finish the season. Wow. Toronto had to win to stay five and a half back. Good swing, even though he fouled it off. I love that swing. He let that ball get deep and took it out of Cervelli's glove. And even though he was late on it, fouled it off. There was good balance, and it's the right approach. Look at this. That's a good swing. You can work off that. I talked to Nomar Garcia Para in Los Angeles, and he was talking about his first at bat. If he fouled the ball, he was right handed, fouled it off over the first base dugout, he knew he was locked in. He was going to square up some balls. He used to try to let the ball get deep on purpose. Instead of being out in front. You know Bryce has a tendency to lunge to drift however you want to call it. But if, if he starts thinking about taking the ball of the catcher's glove look out. As you can tell that's the most excited I've been about a Bryce swing in a while whatever that means. Two and one to Harper. Huge run obviously at first. Rendon on deck here, top nine. Still a good approach. I don't care what happens in this at bat. It's a good approach. No more also went on to tell me. I think you remember I said this on the air in Los Angeles. If he lined out to second his first at bat, he knew he was going to have a good night. That's what he tried to do hit a ball right through the second baseman. <laughs> 2 2 pitch. Harper the other way to stay alive. And you know it's weird as a hitter when you get your hands in that slot and you're thinking let the ball travel all of a sudden you'll catch one out in front to the pull side and it'll go 100 miles and you need you weren't even trying about it you weren't even thinking about it. You were just thinking let the ball get deep and for whatever reason you just speed up a little bit you click it out front to the pull side but you weren't trying because if you're trying you pull off and you hit it foul. So all of this is really good stuff and very encouraging regardless of what happens here. Harper hits it hard. Rodriguez couldn't get it. So Worth and Harper hit hard ground balls right through the shifts. And the Nats are in business here. 
And how good is this from Bryce Harper? Well, just a great approach all night. And, and this whole at bat was good. And you're probably sitting there going, this guy's an idiot. He's getting excited about foul balls. But what I know about hitting and being a former hitting coach, the way he's letting the ball travel, he's not jumping out to get it. His mindset is what everybody's been looking for all season long, drive it the other way. So that first foul ball that he hit over the Pirates dugout was a huge indicator that that's what he's thinking. It's better to be late than early on things. Pull him into your own dugout. And he finished the great at bat. That was beautiful. Well executed by Bryce. Well explained by you. And it's Rendon now looking for his first base hit of the night. Anthony pinned Josh Bell up against the scoreboard last time. Looking for RBI number 79 and maybe 80. Ball whistles in, let her high for a strike. Anthony yep. Rendon and Juan Nicasio have avoided each other somehow. First career matchup. Based on where the hits went tonight and his approach, that's his best game since April, right here, right now, tonight. If he can build off tonight and keep going like that, I mean, Rick Shue has to be beside himself down there. Dusty Baker, same way. Everybody's been waiting for that swing, and whether it's been because of his neck or whatever. It is super encouraging. Nicely done. Bryce, five three hit games this year. Middle of August, the last time he had one, and Nicasio just went inside hardball on Anthony Rendon, two outs. This will be some kind of matchup. Nicasio, who just slammed the rosin back down. On the back hill of the mound and Wilson Ramos. Two on two out. Opposite field hits his last two times. One went a long way, the other a single. Taking all the way. If it continues, that'll be Clint Robinson hitting for Sean Kelly. Who had a very nice four in a row. Retired to get the Nats to this point. So if the Nats hold on to win here I'm seeing this on Twitter right now they, they clinch a wild card berth at least do you remember in 2012 how crazy we went when that happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now we're just kind of like in the ninth inning. Now going, that's kind of a subdued celebration. Right. That's the handshake one and maybe a toast. But yeah. you remember in 12 when that happened the first time since 1933 or whatever it was. One one to Ramos and on the pitching off the plate in. How times have changed. I think Ross Detweiler pitched that game. Now it's just a side note. A lot of Nats fans are calling Wilson here. Easily heard above the quiet crowd. Two one and Ramos a high chopper to the left side crossing over Gung boots it third error of the night for the Pirates and the bases are loaded for Clint Robinson. That's Gung's 14th error of the year. And the Pirates have made 98. It's one of those at bats if you're Clint Robinson you're kind of going back to the dugout saying all right I'm not hitting tonight. Oh wait I'm hitting tonight and I'm hitting with the bases loaded. It's another thing that nobody really ever talks about all the pitching changes making you fall asleep on defense. Mm -hmm. I think that's very valid. Crazy ADD by the ninth inning if you have seven pitching changes. 
thinking about anything but the ball being hit to you. Lynn Robinson. 0 for 2 against Nicasio. Could put a stamp on this game. Give Mark Melanson a bit of a cushion, and that's strike one. One run game, two outs in the ninth, and the base is loaded. 0-2 to Clint. Right side, first baseman to the pitcher. It's freeze to Nicasio. Mark Melanson, you can go home again. Three outs to get for him. And he got a great greeting from the crowd in Pittsburgh. That is classy. And a standing ovation for Pirates fans, a little scoreboard tribute. And what's going through Mark Melanson's mind right now? We'll find out in a minute. Fastball low. To mid 90s, I guess 93 is the highest we've seen. Nasty knuckle curve to go with it. And the cutter is lethal. Well done, Pirates organization and fans. Now they want to beat him. That's fine. That's the way it works. They'll face Cervelli, who he used to throw to, McCutcheon, and Jung Ho Gun. Control the emotions key right now for Mark Melanson. It's really easy to say up here. It's hard to do down there. Wilson Ramos out to greet him. Cervelli has never faced Mark before. McCutcheon has. That trip might have been, hey, you know these guys better than I do. I'm just going to put some suggestions down and you shake to whatever you want to throw and you're, you're most confident in. Cervelli 0 for 4 tonight. There's a magic number of one three outs away, but a lot of work to do. Probably weird for Cervelli. He used to catch Melanson. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. Strike call. 92 with a cutter.
Got to lean into that down by one, don't you? I'm not going to say it. Well, Jose top of the jokes. Ancient history, right? Yeah. Totally forgot about it. Way too off-speed pitch, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 1-1 <laughs> one, one to Cervelli. Ball two. Cervelli's taking his time on purpose. Right side, busted bat. Defoe, one out. Next up, Andrew McCutcheon, who's faced Melanson before, one for four career. Tonight he's walked, tripled, scored, and hit two ground balls after that. Yeah, the Giants have to lose tonight for the Nats to clinch a wild card. My bad. Right field, Harper over to get the base hit. And McCutcheon makes a loud sound. But he's kept in the ballpark, the good news. And he's aboard with one out for Jung Ho Kung. Well, he stood in center field all those years and watched right. He's tried to pull Mark Melanson. He said, I'm not going to try to do too much of this cutter. I'm just going to go the other way, drop the barrel on it, let him supply the power, and not try to do too much. It's a nice piece of hitting by the Pirate center fielder. Here's Gung, who will face Melanson for the first time. He can try to do the same thing. That's got to be the game plan for all these guys. Don't pull them, take them the other way. But he'll throw that cutter at you and bring it back front door. And the Nats would love that to result in a ground ball to the left side. Defoe shaded up the middle, but not a whole lot. There it is. Started off the plate, brought it back. One ball, one strike. I don't think McCutcheon is a threat to go. Like we said earlier, six stolen bases, seven caught. That's a fair ball. Ramos goes to second. Oh, and he pulls Danny Espinosa off the bag. Wilson Ramos trying to get the lead runner, and now the winning runs on base. Well, he saw this happening. McCutcheon got a good jump. I don't even know if a good throw gets him. Maybe there's a lot of dirt on that ball, too. Did you see it sitting there? And he just threw a sinker, a palm ball, basically, to Danny Espinosa. And Danny does a nice job to keep this from first and third. Look at the block by Espinoza. So probably should have got the out at first. Hindsight being 2020, but he thought he had a chance and trusted his arm. Switch hitter and pinch runner now, Pedro Florman, who was actually in the minor leagues with the Nats for a while. 
will be the pinch runner here. They're going. They seeing if Danny was on the base here? Why not? I didn't even think about seeing if his foot was on the base. I just was excited that he blocked the ball. So if he was, it's news to me. All right, there's a throw. Was his foot on the base? Sometimes it is. Ooh, was his right foot dragging across the base? Watch the right foot. Ah. Yeah, slow. It. You got to slow it down a little more for me, if you could. When the ball's in his glove, where's his foot? We need a little Jay Giles band, freeze frame. All right. Oh, wow. So it's a white cleat helper hurt. That would be huge. And it's remarkable to me that he kept it in the glove without at least juggling it. And as you mentioned, keeping it out of center field. This is going to be really interesting. Much closer than we thought with the naked eye. All right, here we go again. Watch this. Is the right foot off the bag or on the bag? Is there enough to change it? I don't know, man. I don't think so. But that's a good thing because I'm usually wrong. There you go. Where's that foot and where's the ball in his glove? It just has to touch his glove, remember, and then be secured after. So right there. Go back. Right, right. Yeah, one more. Keep going. It just has to touch his glove and then be secured later. So they're zooming in on that right now in Chelsea, New York. And if his foot is on the base, which that's a lot closer when we stop it like that, what do you got here? You can't tell ball and glove there, so that's no help. I think that's the definitive view of the first one. What do you got, survey says? No. He's out! Out at second base! 2-6 from Wilson Ramos. Okay, that's officially the best play Danny Espinosa's made all year, and he's made some beautiful plays. <laughs> Unbelievable play by Espinosa on a scud missile from Wilson Ramos. To catch it, I bet you if you run down there and ask him right now, he's shocked that he stayed on the base. Unbelievable play. Just as the Mets game goes final, the Nats challenge, get a call, and it's one out with a runner at first base to get the win. One out needed. Here's Sean Rodriguez. Rodriguez against Melanson. 0 for 1. Went with a curveball. Front door missed inside. Might be the challenge of the year for Dusty Baker. Yeah, unbelievable. And his staff. Unbelievable. I mean, the fact that he caught that, it was in his glove. And remember the rule. It just has to touch leather, and that's when they look. And as long as it's secured after it touches leather, so it doesn't have to be in the back of your glove stuck for the out call. It just has to hit any part of your glove yeah. and then be under control even after your foot's off the bag. And that's the part of the rule they changed because before it had to be all the way into the pocket right. when replay first came in. Want to know Melanson to Rodriguez. Long hold here. Rodriguez to center. Trey Turner. It's over his head. And here comes Florimon. This game is tied. First blown save by Mark Blanchett as a national. He's 12 for 12 before that. And what you know to come here in Pittsburgh. The Nats don't get that call at second base. You don't know what would have happened, but the game could be over. This ball was pure. That Trey Turner had a beat on it, but it just had another gear, and I think it may have surprised Trey at the end. 
It wasn't a bad route by Turner, but I think he was cruising on it, thinking he'd get to it. But it, that ball did have another gear, got over his head, and unbelievable. Wow. Now you just got to try to get to 10th. It's like Eric Fryer, one of their catchers in the pitcher spot here. And the Pirate fans are thinking walk off. Fryer to right. Bryce Harper, long way to go. Grabs it. Foul ball, inning over. And we're going extras. What a play by Bryce Harper. Some spectacular defense in the ninth. And Bryce Harper with a crazy catch. And I think the glove was underneath the ball. I think they thought he smushed the ball into the ground. But it's a catch. Upheld. So it's interesting as we go extras, the Nats have a challenge left. Watch right here at the end. I think the Pirates' contention was that he smushes the ball into the ground into his glove. But there was actually leather underneath it. They just showed it on the scoreboard, too. And we'll play some free baseball. Crazy, crazy September. Tony Watson takes over. He will be the eighth Pittsburgh pitcher tonight. Sixty nine games. He's the guy who's taken over as their closer since Mark Melanson's departure. The Pirates a lot of credit because the air could have gone totally out of their sails after they lost that challenge at second base. So my Twitter blew up during the break saying Danny's left foot was on the base. I saw both actually, but thank you. Sometimes you get so fixed on one little thing that you don't see the big picture. Either way, it was a fantastic play. Good change up for Watson. That's his out pitch at 85. Fastball average is 93. Nobody said it'd be easy. So, some changes behind Tony Watson. We'll get you updated on those in a moment. Pedro Florimon, who was the pinch hitter there, 
come in and play shortstop and that moves Sean Rodriguez over to third. Ryan Zimmerman 0 for 2 career against Tony Watson. A couple of doubles tonight, 2 for 4. Fair ball right over the bag. High throw. Safe. And they don't have any challenges. Mike Everett ruling that David Fries did not get back down on the bag and Zimmerman's aboard. It doesn't matter if they have any challenges. They'll go out politely and ask the umpires to look at it. Doesn't yeah. matter. It's irrelevant. We've seen it all year. Well, this is Cl where Clint Hurdle's already putting the headphone sign up. Rodriguez, you could see the launch coming. He took his time. On or off when he came down. He was off when he came down, but did the tag get him? That's what I'm looking at. What do you got on the tag? He's out. He's out. He's out. Umpire review is going to get the Nats here. But see, this is where not having a challenge does not matter. Right. Nice play by David Freeze. A guy that's played third most of his career jumps up, catches it, and tags Ryan Zimmerman all in one motion. That was nice. Clint Hurdle still has a million challenges left tonight. A million. Yeah. So all he has to do is ask the umps nicely. Dusty Baker has a million left. So it's, it's just stupid. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where you go from there. Yeah. Danny Espinosa, one for three, two run homer and a walk. Wilmer Defoe is next. And this one to left. It'll back up. Matt Joyce. <laughs> Not happy. Well, one swing by Sean Rodriguez. Lori Moan scoring easily from first after he was brought in to pinch run. And Defoe takes one outside. Facing Tony Watson for the first time. Nets this year in extra innings are five and seven, one and three on the road. Careful right here, he's got sneaky pop. Fair ball. So Defoe into second base. Mark Wegner on the call. The Nats have a runner in scoring position. Come on, got to a 2 0 count, turned the fan on, and Sean Rodriguez is playing no double, so it's hard to get the ball by him. Look where he's playing. But Defoe just hit it too fast. Good call by Mark Wegner. If you're not, that was close. Now Trey Turner has a chance to be the hero. Turner against Watson for the first time. Watson throwing that cutter in.
Turner pops it up. Straight back over the screen. When Trey Turner learn as you move forward as a center fielder, when you have a, the, the tying run on first base, nothing can be hit over your head. You play no doubles defense. So I'm playing heels almost on the warning track right there and cutting down the gaps. Runner on second, maybe a cheat in right there where you can throw somebody out. But a runner on first, one run game, nothing can be hit over your head ever. Even if it, the ball is crushed like Rodriguez's ball was, that can't happen. And the more he plays center field, he'll realize that, you know, when you do the hand behind your head, the no doubles defense, nothing can be hit over your head. I think he just took two steps to left field before he took a drop step, and that's where that whole thing happened. But he'll learn. That'll never happen to him again, trust me. He'll play so deep in the next situation like that, he'll cruise on it. And maybe it's better to happen now and not in October. Turner right side. There's no activity in the Nats bullpen. Mark Melanson could go from blown save to a chance to be the winner. But the Nats score here. He only threw 12 pitches that inning to five hitters. Things happening ultra quickly. Worry about that in a moment. Right now, Turner trying to put the Nats back on top. Seems like where McCutcheon's playing right now. He's playing shallow to cut down the run. Turner. And this one just out of play. Josh Bell giving chase. Fighting. Good take. He wants more than anything to drive in this run, trust me. Pitch coming. Stewart locking horns. Everything in, pretty much. Right off the end of the bat. Ball going down the line with the runner. And it's a fair ball base hit. Or did he point foul? Why did he give the safe side? So Turner returns. I guess maybe a safe sign for the first baseman picking it up in foul territory. It's a foul ball sign. He just put both arms out to the side and said foul ball, right? Here. Foul. Okay, he did have him raised. You're right. Tell you what, Wilmer Defoe could have forced the issue right there if he <laughs> came screaming around third. Freeze would have had to make a tough decision. 2 2 again. Trey Turner really extending the at bat. Bunch of runners tonight. That's 10 on the evening. Make it 11.
swarming in the Nats bullpen. Comes to fruition here in the bottom of the tenth. Mark Melanson, 12 pitches, seven strikes. In that two hit, one run, ninth inning, is going to pitch the tenth. Freeze, Bell, and Joyce for Clint Hurdle. There's a lot to keep track of right now in this ballgame late into the night. Well, you remember in Pittsburgh, he's only been used in save opportunities. For Dusty Baker, he's been used in tie ball games. He's been used in a four run lead situation a number of times. And I wonder if he's ever pitched the 10th after blowing a save in the ninth. It is unusual. Especially with the expanded rosters, but it could have been something like, I want the 10th inning, Dusty. And Dusty said, okay. David Freeze, three for three career against Melanson. Pardon me, that was a, an Oliver Perez number. David Freeze, two for four against Mark Melanson. That's a big hook. One and two. I don't recall him throwing any of those in the ninth. He was cutter, 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 and the game plan from the Pirates was to go the other way, and they had some good at bats. It's tough facing your old team for the first time. You feel like you're in a dream world out there. To the right side, Wilmer Defoe. One down, bottom of the tenth. And Josh Bell is next. Bellow for four tonight. Well, he is out of the batter's box against this cutter. And he, he, he hasn't been there all night. His foot is like Wilson Ramos used to hit last year. And Melanson seeing that, he'll just backdoor the cutter if he can execute the game plan. Because there's no way he, he can hit a cutter off the plate that comes back. No way. One ball and two strikes. Way in on his hands. Speed over match, and there's the big hook. Two down. Melanson's first strikeout in this appearance. So you throw the cutter in. Now I'm thinking, oh man, I got to get to that one. And then you drop the curveball, and you see his front side just spent right there. He's thinking about turning on the cutter. There's Matt Joyce, one for four career against Mark with a couple of RBIs. Came into play left field in the eighth, lined out in the bottom of that inning to Trey Turner.
I half expect John Facenda to start talking after that song. <laughs> you think he keeps going, it'll become the frozen tundra. <laughs> Swing and a miss, one and two. Base is empty, two outs, bottom 10. And a bouncer. Field shift, 2 2 pitch, and that's off the plate inside. I feel like with cutters and Melanson against the left, you could put four guys on the right side of the infield. There's one right to Ryan Zimmerman. Ryan will take it himself. One, two, three, tenth for Melanson. Jason Ward followed by Bryce Harper and Anthony Rendon. Here comes the eleventh. Thousand five hundred and thirteen were here today. A bunch of them have stayed to watch a marathon ball game here. This is Wade LeBlanc, thirty-two-year-old lefty from Louisiana, pitched at Alabama. And for the Pirates this year, his fifth appearance started the season. Made eleven appearances, eight starts with Seattle. Jason Worth, three for nine career against the lefty. Eleventh inning underway. It's just such a big game for the Nats to win this and have it in their own hands tomorrow. You know, if they don't, we're right back to where we were at the start of this game tomorrow. Yeah. Magic number at two, and you got to root for the Phillies. Cutter from LeBlanc, it averages 84, fastball 87. Curveball change to complement the heater. <laughs> RBI walk and a base hit for Jason tonight, one for four. 
Ooh, that's a good rip. That approach we just talked about with Bryce's last time up would play really nice here against LeBlanc, too. And worth the hook, one to left. Hit it well. Right at Matt Joyce, one out. Harper, two for eight career against the lefty. But the Padres and the Marlins earlier in his career, and that's why some of the Nats have hit against him, but that's been a while. Rice three for five tonight, a double, two singles. Trying to hit one in the river. I like it. Oh, one. And he drops one under his back. He only has two four hit games in his career. Can you believe that? One in 2012, one in 2013. They're that is hard to believe. Yeah. Going for it right now. So I think he's due. One two pitch with one out. Look out oh. right off the front of the barrier that the Nats dug out. Jason Worth almost just died. And that's not even an exaggeration. That yeah, was I'd really stay back too. That was right at Jason Worth. Harper to left high in the air and Joyce is there. Fair ball two outs. Anthony Rendon is 0 for 5 and looking for a knock here. First time he faces LeBlanc. And a 1 0 almost grazed him. Ball two. That's not distracting. It's become Banshee night at the ballpark. It's, it's the I wish the beer stands were still open cry. <laughs> 3 0 to Anthony Rendon with Wilson Ramos on deck. Four pitch walk a base runner. Right, still second, still third, still home. Mm -hmm. 
Ramos has faced LeBlanc twice, so for one with a walk. Wilson a two for five night. With a go-ahead home run back in the sixth. Nets would add a run to go up 5-3, and then the Pirates able to score a run in the sixth, and then the the heartbreaker in the ninth. the same pitch he hit out it was just a little closer to him remember the home run to right center it was out over the plate he got extended a little more the elevation might have been a hair higher and that one had a little more play but the same swing blocked by Cervelli long night behind the plate for both of these catchers Nicole Taylor for the pitcher Melanson on deck. Swing and a miss. The Nats have stranded a dozen middle of the 11th and it's 5-5. Thought the Nats going to just get right out of here with a win. Now, as we go to the bottom of the 11th at 11:31 local time, it's Yusmero Petit. And FP, his pitching log lately has been mostly empty. Something like uh, two appearances in the last three to four weeks. Crazy. It's a crowded bullpen out there, and Dusty Baker has a lot of choices. The starting pitching has been pretty much on point, so he hasn't had a chance to use his long man. Which is kind of a good thing, but not for his Merrill Petit. So fastball, slider, curveball change the arsenal. Fastball usually away at 88, 89 miles an hour. Frazier, Cervelli, and McCutcheon for the Pirates in the bottom of the 11. Now, September 9th was his last time on the mound. September 9th. Yeah. September 8th, excuse me. And before that, it was August 27th. Remember at Philadelphia, he pitched an inning in third. Did it just one hit, no runs. And if you didn't remember, I didn't either. Adam Frazier tonight. One for four RBI single, sack fly.
17th pitcher in the game is Yusmero Petit. Swing and a miss. And a catcher's tag, one out. And for the sixth time tonight, Dean Martin walks up Francisco Cervelli. <laughs> Good pitch by his bear. It looked like a curveball down. Frazier out in front. First time in a couple of weeks for Yasmero. Cervelli won for two career against him. Pitcher spot for the Nats due to lead off in the 12th, and it could be petite hitting. Although so many pitchers out there, not necessarily a long man's outing for him tonight. That ball is down the line and left. Trouble if fair. It's fair. Bounces out, and it's a ground rule double. Now McCutcheon with a base open. It looked like a, a curveball that just kind of stayed up. And his marrow root for this to get foul. I think Jason Worth was too. He's playing Cervelli in left center. So there's no way Dusty Baker can let Andrew McCutcheon walk him off. I'm pretty sure he'll get four wide. It'll be first and second, one out. The boos will come now. McCutcheon or Pedro Florimo. See any lefties up for Florimo in the bullpen, so this is all his narrow petite. And he's a switch hitter, and so he will go to the left side here, where he's four for seven, one for three right handed. Florimo, briefly a part of the Nats organization two years ago, they signed him at the end of the 2014 season as a free agent, coming out of a minor league season. And Pirates picked him up on waivers two months later. Limited big league time with the Orioles, the Twins, and the Pirates for the 28-year-old switch hitting infield. So this go round with Pittsburgh, he's five for ten with three RBIs and 11 ball games. Now, if you're in the Nats outfield, you got to get to a point as an outfielder where you can throw out the runner at home. Cervelli runs well, so you got to cheat in. Good change. Yeah, we really had some down and away movement, didn't it? That guy. The culprit, Sean Rodriguez. Checking. Down and in. On the appeal, Mark Wegner says no swing.
he's got protection on deck. Sean Rodriguez having a nice year, having a nice night. So Florimon should get something to hit here in a 3-1 count based on who's standing in the on-deck circle. 3-1 pitch. Bases are loaded. This is not good. I got to think lucky. Now the outfield really has to come in. Rodriguez, the hero in the bottom of the ninth when the Pirates are down to their final out. And now a chance to be the walk-off guy. He's never faced his Miro Petit. His delivery's all out of sorts all of a sudden. He's trying to overthrow because of the situation. He's really cut those last two pitches. Trying to hump up and it's just not there because he hasn't pitched in so long. Counts even 1-1. One, one. Good pitch. A ground ball right at somebody, a pop-up or a strikeout keeps this game going. He's really got to feel his position here with the infield in. Strike zone for a few pitches. You could try to expand here if you're using Merrill. See if he'll go with you. Don't throw him a strike for a minute. And just out of the mid of Wilson Ramos on the foul tip. Rolling up around his eyes. Sean Rodriguez right now wants to win the game. He wants to go home. If you can control your emotions and he can't, you win this battle. What does that mean? Throw something up in his eyes. It's a one-two count. So what if it goes to two-two? You might get a swing and a miss and a strikeout if you throw it right around his eyes. Or a foot or two outside on a big breaking ball. Two outs. I mean, taking he showed advantage you, of him. He showed you his cards. He put his cards face up on the table. He said, I'm going to win this game by chasing some pitches out of the zone. So if you're a veteran like Ismero Petit is, there's no need to throw him strikes. He wasn't cool. He wasn't calm. He wasn't relaxed. It's was no fault of his. He wanted to be the hero. And that's kind of how he's wired. And Ismero Petit took advantage of it. Now he's got one more big out to get. Catcher Jacob Stallings. Been there, done that a million times. You want to be the guy, and you don't let the game come to you. You force it. So in the pitcher's spot, swing and a miss. He just showed his hand too. You don't have to throw him a strike. He wants to walk you off. You know, the ideal thing in these situations for you younger players to control the pulse, get into a count, back him into a corner where you know he has to throw a strike. Oh, he's, two. he's swinging. I mean, now don't even throw anything near until it gets 2-2. Two, two. You kind of see how this works? Big situations. If a guy's amped up, he's hacking. The good ones, the, the McCutcheons, the Harpers, the worst, they take pitches here. They make you make a mistake. It's easy to say. It's hard to do. Oh, well, that ball skipped into Ramos' mitt. I mean, ideally, you want your catcher getting over and blocking this. <laughs> but maybe Wilson Ramos a little bit too fatigued this time of year, this time of the game to do it. So close. Two and two. All right, now you got to come to him, and he knows it. So, advantage hitter all of a sudden. He 
you still can you still have a pitch to play with where you could make it a strike near strike and get him to chase. But it has to look like a strike out of his hand for the hitter to chase. Cervelli at third the only runner that means a thing. Two two with two outs. It's a strike. That's a strike. I mean, you got to bear down in a pennant race right there in that call. Three two count. Game on the line. Do it again. Anticipate this kind of adrenaline tonight. Line drive, base hit, game over. And the magic number refuses to budge tonight. It stays at two. Should celebrate. It's a hard fought win. They have flickering hopes in the wild card.